Welcome back. We made it. Here we are. We are about to start the top 16 ceremony for round four here at the 2023 G-Shock Presents Formula Drift Japan Sportsland Sugo in the Miyagi Prefecture. Beautiful weather. Look at that overview of the track. Right now we had the kids walk out here meeting all the drivers, the top 16 drivers and checking out their cars close up. And you can see them right there on the screen. Having a good time. They got their Hot Wheel car and their, their snack with them. And there they are waving their FD flags in the air. Yeah, we're about to kick this top 16. There you go, the Hot Wheel car that they get. And then the cookie snacks that are falling after. That's yummy. Why don't I get a Hot Wheel? Am I too old for one? <laughs> Never too old for a Hot Wheel. Yeah. Yeah, so if you do want to join, if you're in Japan and in the area, you want your kids to come and join us, uh, hit up uh, Formula Drift Japan, go to their website. There should be some kind of explanation uh, on the kids' walk. You know, it's pretty cool just to have the kids to come out um, to check out the vehicles up close on the track. We are about to start. Uh, we're about to start. The opening ceremony. Please, everybody, stand and hats off for the Japanese national anthem. Thank you for everyone. We're gonna go ahead and check out the battles now for the top 16. We're gonna go ahead and go over the drivers and they're, we're gonna start the drivers and go right over here. The Dokumi Meno Batoru this. The first battle of the top 16 is the 17th qualifier driving the V-style good ride with Tetsujin. JZS 100 Chaser, he's the wild driver, it's car number five. Tomoki Tanaka! That's Kumamo from Kumamoto. Not gonna make it easy for him. He was 32 in qualifying, knocking out the number one, and he's trying to solidify here, rocking the brand new suit right there, Brazil in Japan. Here he is in the Side X Japan with silent tires and Liberty Walk S15, number 555, Yukio Fausto! Moving on to the second battle, the top 16. Hopujuro ku, Tatsume no Batoru desu. Qualifying eighth and ninth. This is gonna be a close one because they're teammates and they're buddies, but they're gonna be enemies on here on the track. Driving that last tire, Drift Team Fukushima Z34, Fair Lady Z, car number 311. He's a veteran, Naoto Suenaga. Like Robbie said, teammates, but this man right here sitting third overall in points right now. He's gonna make it to the top number in the Ling Long Tire Drift. Team Orange, A90 Super, number four, Masanori Kohashi. Third battle of the top 16. He came from the state, from the best coast. It's the West Coast, driving the Team Kazama with power vehicles. Lexus IS500 F Sports Performance Drift. Car number 21, Kenshiro Gushi. Going against him, he's trying to lock another win. He won podium number one at Fuji, trying to lock it in here, ranked 13th. He's in the TMS Racing Team Silent Tire, E92 BMW number 36, Kazumi Takahashi. 
This was your field tomato ball through the fourth battle of the top 16. This is last year, 2022's FDJ Series champion driving an A90 Supra built by Cusco Racing. He is car number 774, Hokuto Matsuyama. Ripping around track, making killer chase runs. Here he is right here in the Good Ride Motorsports GR Yaris, number 530, Wataru Masuyama. Bitsu Juroku, Itsume no Batoru. Qualifying second in yesterday's qualifying, moving into the top 16. How far is this wild man going with this Good Ride Motorsports Z34? It is car number 111, Tetsuya Hibino. This young driver's ready to knock him down and push on into the grade eight. He's in the Awa Tire Racing FD3 S Arc 7, number 212, Yutaro Oe. Damu Tsumeno Patoru, the sixth battle of the top 16, taking out the two-time FD Japan champion at the top 32 battle. 5X tire, Navigate S14, Silvio, he's a wild young driver, car number three, Takatoshi Ima Maeda. This driver is not ready to knock this four-time champ down right here in the Team Kazama with Power Vehicles, JZX 100 Mark II, number 100, Andrew Gray. Seventh battle of the top 16, driving the Shibata Racing Yokohama GR86, coming off the podium from Fuji. He is car number 31, Kodai Slovakiri. Going against him, he's been here from day one. He knows the recipe to get on the podium. Here he is in the Tanabe SSR Team Dunlop JZX100 Mark II, number 38, Tarahiro Fukara. Last but not least battle, the current points ranking leader, only 13 year old driving Cusco Racing, GR Yaris. He is the sensation. Young driver from FD Japan, car number 771, Hiroya Minoa. They may be friends in the pits, friends on the team, friends on the sim, but hey, they have enough time behind the wheel here. He's ready to beat him, knows his secret. He's in the Team Cusco Racing GR86, number 77, Yusuke Kusaba. Now these are your top 16 drivers here. Who is coming on top? I have no idea. I am excited to see who is gonna win this round because when they're on, they're on. Some of these battles have been super close in the top 32. Now hopefully we can uh, showcase this. Uh, all the drivers can show you guys their skill level here and uh, go full on from the beginning, not holding anything back. Exactly, and the crazy thing is, if you missed top 32, we saw a lot saw a lot of upsets. I said it before, Yukio Fausto ranking 32nd, being that cutoff for the top 32, knocking out the number one qualifier, Kanto, who took qualifying first last year here. So it's been a lot of upsets and crazy battles that we've seen so far. Yeah, so some of the top qualifiers, I think the only ones that I see that are the top qualifiers I hear is, uh, let's see, within the top five, we have a uh, qualifying fourth, it's Gucci, uh, Matsuyama was fifth, Hibino was second, and uh, Sobagiri was third. So those four drivers are one of the higher uh, qualifiers here. And uh, like you said, you know, Kanta got knocked out by Fausto. That kind of shows that any of these drivers has a chance to go on top because it doesn't really matter how well they do in the qualify. Um, it does help them get onto the third place podium, but if they're gonna take it all the way to the top, it doesn't really matter where you qualify it, as long as you beat whoever that you're gonna be going head to head against. Exactly, and like Robbie was saying, the point standing is very tight. All The top three drivers right now are sitting in the top 16, so we're gonna see who's gonna be moving on and getting that solidified point standing. You know, we displayed it earlier. It wasn't showing the qualify points, but it's a tight race right now. The great, the top eight drivers right now, anybody could be in the top four of the series. And right now we're hitting the hump of the series. This is round four right now, Sportsland Sugo. Yeah, so we're in the hump. Like you said, you know, this is very, very important for some of the drivers because uh, the championship 
if you get left behind here, you only have two more rounds to try to secure more points uh, to make it higher up in the series. And currently we have um, some of the drivers here. And you can see we them the, ready. Some of the drivers here that are um, getting ready to go. And I think they're going to, somebody's going to come on top, obviously. And look at all those smiles by these kids right there. The kids walk that happened right before the ceremony. They got firsthand look at these cars. Now he gets to see them all driving off. Waving them, the fans all out there. But hey, I want to let you fans out there know we are chiming into your guys' group or, or the chat room right now. We see what's going on. A lot of fans out there. Yes, we do miss Mad Mike. Unfortunately, he didn't make it into the top 32. Uh-oh, uh-oh. And yeah, it looks like they're pushing one of the vehicles off right now. That's uh, Andrew Gray's vehicle. Yeah. But there you go. Those are the Motor Game Girls. Oh, man, I was like, who's pushing the car? I was like, that would have messed up if they made the kids do it. <laughs> That's a first-hand experience right there. That's, that's true. Do you want to be like. a driver or do you want to be a mechanic? Exactly. Here you are on the screen. On the right, you got Tom Sai, but he's going to be commentating. And on the PA system on the Japanese side, right next to him is Nobutiro Tanaguchi. He'll be doing a PA commentating and stuff like that. And then you got Yoichi Momura, right. one of the FD Japan one judges. Of, exactly. Legendary driver right here, a legendary formula of Japan. Commentator, Kenny Harris. Me, one of the guys who's just blabbing in the background with a, a bad attitude, Robin Yoshida, and one of the judges also. And we got uh, Sean Adriano all the way from Long Beach, uh, our guest judge, and he's been filling in uh, this year, most of them. So we'll see him till the end of the year, probably. So exactly. We'll now on screen, you got the Umbrella Girls coming from the Fukushima Team Fukushima and the DIY. Yeah, so they're not so. They're, I, I'm guessing they're probably from this area because we're only about an hour away from. Fukushima. Uh, we're in Miyagi Prefecture, uh, closer to Sendai, and uh, here you go. These are the kids walking back. Uh, we're going to go ahead and do some introduction right here. G-Shock. Edifice. Valenti. Yokama Tires. Bridgestone. Dunlop, Goodyear, Toyo Tires, Good Ride, Performance Tires, Kenda, Molino, 5X, Silent Tire, Vitor Tire, Linglong Tire, Moti, Hyper Lubricant Technology, Carport Marzen, Sports Service RSR, Brit, Ogura Clutch, Rays, HPI, Toyota Gazoo Racing, Cusco, Project Mew, VN Sports, Swiss Springs, Hot Wheels, Kazama Auto Service, Comtech, Shibata Tire, KTC, Arai Helmets, Treasure One Company, Z Max. Hummingbird, FPB Drones, Kiva, and Torque Drift 2. These were your sponsors and supporters of the Formula Drift Japan series. Thank you very much. Without you guys, we wouldn't have this wonderful series uh, to showcase to you guys. And also, you guys supporting us watching the live stream is probably one of the biggest uh, supporters that we have. Exactly. Our sponsors and supporters are you guys out there, my wife, my kids, Robbie's wife's watching too, but let's go on to some interviews. Formula Drift Japan. The brightness. 
called brilliant, blinding and vivid, Valentine. キュートクロン静かさと安全性オンロードオフロード世界中で活躍するケンダーその信頼を支える西運性安定性と対魔能性世界が認めた技術と信頼を街乗りである高品質と納得の価格太陽のポテンシャルをあなたにケンダー What's up guys, it's Freddy Gospo and I use RSR suspension on all my drift cars. I love RSR. Eo RSR Ichiban. Japan. Breed. Seven, had a brand new bed and get all the way through, just throws up. In a world of extremes,
This is where they're refined. The real deal. Cusco. 伝統と革新。小倉クラッチのテクノロジーを凝縮。チャンピオンを取るためのクラッチ。小倉レッシングクラッチ。O R C。そこが知りたい FDJ ということでですねスタートのまあフライングだったりいろいろルールのことを少し説明していきたいと思っていますが FDJ のね名スターターである、えー、黒田さん通称クロちゃんにちょっとスタートのね、えー、手をいろいろ説明してもらいたいなと思いますお願いしますお願いしますこちらにあるこのスターターのライト、えー、クロちゃんちょっと、えー、どういうふうに、はい、説明してもらっていいですかセットした後にこのキックスイッチを押しますと12345ブラックアウトこれでスタートになりますということで先行の車両はこのライトが全部ブラックアウトになった瞬間、えー、すぐにスタートしなきゃいけないんですよねはい後追いの車ってこのライトは後追いに関しては、えー、シグナルは関係ないです、えー、フライングしても構いません後ろの車は自分がうまくえーまあ、前の車についていけるようなタイミングで出れるってことですねそうですねブラックアウトをしてワンカウントツーカウントぐらい進まなかった場合それかブラックアウトを完全にする前に、えー、車体が前に出てしまいますと一応フライングという形で、えーまあ、ワンカウントというですワンカウントですあともう一つこのスタートの、まあ、おなじみの資金なんですけどこのパイロンも、えー、跳ねちゃったり触っちゃったりするとそのワンカウントに入るんですよねはいワンカウントですで、えー、何回そういう失敗をしたら3回で失格です3回目で失格ですね、はい、フライングなりパイロンタッチした場合は、えー、ストレートの先にあるリスタートシグナルというのを点,点灯させてドライバーにしますまあ、FDJ のこのスターターとしてずっと、えー、クロちゃんを、えー、長くやってるんですけど、うん、やっぱりその未だにやっぱりスタートする前とかって緊張しますかやはりねなるべくならリスタートはさせたくない、えー、でそれもしっかりと再定しなくちゃいけないまあこちらも緊張感もありますし選手の緊張感も伝わってきますということで、えーまあ、スターターの奥側側の話もちょっと取れたんですが、えーまあ、このスターターが、えー、どういうふうに車をスタートさせて、えー、やっていったというのを皆さんもちょっと、えー、分かっていただければもうちょっと楽しく、えー、FDJ の方を見ていただけ,いただけるのかなと思いますということで、えー、ここスターターから、えー、中継でお伝えしました。Alright, so as you see, Uh, they were explaining a little about what happens at the start line. You got the light when all the lights turn off. That's when the lead car has to leave. They cannot wait or sit at the light. They cannot leave too early. They cannot hit any of the cones. Any of that's going to be a restart. Now, as the chase driver can leave whenever they want, they can hit any cone they want to, but、uh, we're not going to call a restart for them. But if you do leave too early, you don't want to、uh, block the lead car、um, their way. So you have to watch out, keep、yeah. your pace. Yeah. We, had a close, we had a close call. There's Kudo right there. He's、yeah. the start line. He's the Matt Sopa of FD Japan. Yeah, so、uh, like Robbie was saying, we had a incident last, what is it, top 32, second to last run. Hiroya Minoa going against Fujimoto. Fujimoto hit cones twice, almost that third strike to not give him his run. Yeah, so Kuroda has been our starter for seven years here for Formula Drift Japan. Wow, and look at his face, gets burnt every time. I don't know how he does it. But whenever we were in COVID times, it was hilarious because he would have a giant white patch on the, where his mouth was covered. Yeah, because he had the mask on all the time. Yeah, so he'd had a, he had a white beard. At one point. <laughs> At one point. But yeah, he actually traveled, I think, 18 hours. He's come, he comes from all the way down south. From Okayama. Yeah. yeah. So, man traveled a long way to get up here. 
close to the Sendai area. Yeah, because we don't, in Japan, we don't, I mean, I know sometimes they use the bullet train, the Shinkansen, um, to travel, but a lot of the guys do drive. Um, not a lot of people use the airplane. Um, in the U.S., they have, you know, everybody usually hops on a plane to go to a different state, maybe a different coast, but uh, um, here, it's usually a train ride or driving. Yes. You guys can see us on the screen. You can see the sun is creeping on us slowly. But yeah. So the sun is coming towards us. So let's get this started. And <laughs> exactly. But I gotta we, we have to start to like creep back. Back up. But they did provide us with a fan. So it's a little nice and breezy up here for me. Robbie and Sean are suffering and they're blaming this on me because I might have said something in top 32. Yes, he did. <laughs> so yeah, I'll be sitting in the back seat on the way home. All right. Um, so yeah, awesome. there. But yeah, moving on. This is top 16. Yesterday we had top 16 for FDJ2. It was round three for them. This is round four of the Pro Series. FDJ2 is the feeder series equivalent to Prospect in the states. They feed into the Pro Series. And we also have an FDJ3 series, and that's like the Pro-Am series where it feeds into FDJ2. So um, that's new to this year, FDJ3 is. FDJ2's been around for about three years. And guess what? We've been around for now, how long, Robbie? 10 years. 10 long years. Well, not us, yeah. but FD Japan has. Exactly, and this is my fourth season. I've had a blast. Looks like 1310 is what he's saying we're gonna yeah, start. Yeah, we're gonna start driving. And it's going to be kicked off at 3.10. So we got about three more minutes. So what do you guys have? Do you guys have any questions for us? Yeah, we got um, the chat going on on the phone right here. It's about a 15-second delay. I've said it before. But, yeah, I got to say, hands down to y'all out there talking to us. We don't talk to the PA system like Jared does in the States. He has the fans out there. He gets to talk to them, give the wave, all that. We can't do all that. We got y'all online, our supporters, providing us comments, negative or positive, whatever it is. But uh, we do appreciate every bit of it. And, you know, I've had a blast these last four years. You're, you're leaving us already? No, unfortunately. <laughs> Robbie says that with no. a smile, but deep down inside, his heart is broken. Yeah, I'm, I, I'm glad. I'm glad Kenny's leaving. I mean, can't stand that guy. I mean, you know. No, I'm just kidding. Ken's a cool guy. Uh, Kenny's a Kenny's a pretty, he's all right. Kenny's well, all right. Well, you know, yeah. I get by, I guess. Yeah. But yeah, no, <laughs> no thanks to y'all out there. Y'all are doing the, you know, supporting us out here, giving us the comments. COVID was really hard for Formula Joe Japan, not opening the country, but looks like we're about to start top 16. And speaking of the country being open, come out here, join us at one of these events. We got two more rounds coming up. We'll show you those at the end of the event of top 16, you know, and you guys need to come out, say what's up to us, check out the drifting live out here in Japan. And yeah, there's yeah, and some- you know what, and also, you know, while you're here, if you're a drift fan or if you even drive yourself, you know, you know you should be able to find a way, you know, to get into a car or at least go watch some kind of drifting in some kind of form at one of these tracks because there are a lot of mini tracks that we have, even if it's not a big event, you know, just go and check out the local scene in the drifting so you could at least go home and say, you know, I saw Japanese drifting, you know. Exactly. And like you were just saying, and you kind of coming up to line, you see Yukio Fausto right there. He does provide, you know, lessons and a, a day or a week pass. I don't know what it is. At, oh, that's right. Yeah. Circuit. So, yeah, they he's, do. he's out there with the uh, Sidex Japan. Um, team, which they provide, you know, the car, everything. They do the whole nine yards. So go check it's them out. It's in their name. It's know, Sideways side, Experience. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so most definitely check them out. But right there, coming to the line, ready to battle it out. The first top 16 battle, Tomoki Tanaka right there, pulling to the line. Yeah, so Fausto qualified 32nd. He barely made it, and he took out Kanta, who qualified number one, and who qualified last year here. Uh, so Tanaka's gonna be leading and Fausto is going to give chase. And we're gonna see how this goes. I mean, I think it's a new Fausto. He's got a new suit going, new gear, new repping. So I think he's ready to go. And he says he's got a little bit more power underneath this hood. So let's see All right. Yukio Fausto in the chase. Starting off the top 16 of the 2023 G-Shock Presents Formula Drift Japan Series here. Round four, Sports Land Sugo. Looks like Tanaka's messing up right there. Getting a little bit of Struggle through that outer zone one right there. Through outer zone two also couldn't get all the way out there. Dipping a tire. Yukio Fausto adjusting himself to the driving in front of him. Tanaka. Right. 
Yeah, Tanaka doesn't look too uh, aggressive at the initiation, uh, but it looks like Fausto in the chase position, he does a good job adjusting to how Tanaka is driving. Now doesn't make it all the way to the outside of the outside zone one, but does a good job um, mimicking what Tanaka is doing. And right here, Tanaka doing the switch back from outside zone two to three, not a whole lot of angle and not a whole lot of uh, side to side motion. And he comes very short on angle at the outside zone three. So let's go ahead and check this out one more time. I'm gonna check the bird's eye view here. You can see how Tanaka struggled a little bit through that outer zone one, not having a, the angle that we were used to from his last battle slash qualify, bringing Ooh, it back you know, around. We gotta watch this one more time where there is Oh, I, I almost missed that right now. Watch this. Fausto. Right through the finish. Spins through the finish. Wow, they're going to check out the replays on that, see how far it was. He was in drift, may possibly have over-rotated through the finish. There you go, Fausto fans out there. This time around, Yukio Fausto is gonna be in the lead while you have Tomoki Tanaka in the chase. Yukio Fausto with a side X Japan with Cylon tires and Liberty Walk while he's going against Tanaka in the V-style good ride with Tetsujin. And here they are leaving and we're the gonna have to now. Let's go ahead and see this battle. Here he is. Come back to that. Coming around into the 3-2-1, bringing it around to the outer zone one here. Getting all the way in that zone. Tanaka giving him a good chase right there. Nice job, nice positioning, bringing it back around into the outer zone two, keeping it in the track. Right there, strong finish by Fausto. Wow, so it looked like Tanaka now at the finish line, he looked like he straightened. So if both of the drivers has an incomplete in the chase position, we're gonna have to determine. Yeah, right there. So let's go ahead and see this from different views. The bird's eye view will give us the best then look at if, it. If Tanaka straightens right there. Oh. So if Tanaka, there you go, that's an incomplete for both of the drivers. Now we're gonna go uh, to see the lead. Yeah, you can see a huge mistake. It looks like he got lost from the transition from outer zone two, or outer zone three to that outer zone four, right? About, nope, right actually there. he didn't get lost. He was right in that yeah. pocket, but he just couldn't keep it in drift. So what just happened was Yukio spun through the finish line in the chase position. Tanaka straightens before he gets to the finish position. So now we're gonna look at it as an incomplete from both of the chase. Now we're ignoring both of the chase drivers now we have to see the leads of both the drivers and see who did a better lead run. The lead to lead, chase to chase right here. You can see them swinging back around. Yukio Fausto yep. carrying a lot more angle through the zone. So this might be, uh, actually, this might be kind of an easier one for us to decide because of the nature of how the vehicles were uh, in the lead position. Tanaka, there's a big mistake that he made in the lead position going from outside zone two to three. Uh, he couldn't angle up. Uh, Fausto doing a good job in the lead position. All right, Robbie Nishida going right. Sean Adriana going right. And Yoichi Mamur going right. So right there, our first victor going on to the grade eight is Yukio Fausto. Fausto saved by the bell because it wasn't looking good for him uh, with the spin out going through the finish line. And uh, now uh, Tanaka also making a critical mistake behind Fausto at the finish line. That really, really saved him. Exactly, he's gotta clean that up for his grade eight run that he's gonna have, the battle he's gonna have right there at the finish. He's gotta clean that up, but definitely a pretty good run by his uh, lead. Yeah, his lead run was very good. And uh, same thing, you know, Tanaka, if he was able to pull off a, one of his good lead runs, that could have been a one more time, and or maybe, you know, c close comparison, maybe we could have gave it to another driver. But uh, best of luck for him for the next round. Falso's moving on to the grade eight. And here we are moving on to our next battle. Teammates in the pits, but enemies out on the track, sitting at the line right now. Right now, you got Naoto Suenaga going against Masanori Kohashi. This is gonna be good. One with Atlas tires, the other one Linglong tires, bringing it around. 
Oh, looks like looks like a little bit of contact might have happened. Not sure, but bringing it back around. Kohashi over rotating right there a little, bringing it back around. Naoto Suenaga doing his thing through outer zones two and three there. And man, possibly Kohashi made a huge mistake on that three, two, one initiation. Yeah, I think Kohashi kind of came in a little too hot at initiation and bumped Suenaga. So that's it. But Suenaga right here, late at the transition, and I talked about this at the driver's meeting, and I hope um, you guys watch this as well. Watch where the vehicle transits, where the uh, outside zone three is, and uh, we're gonna go ahead and see the drone view as well. And obviously it's a mistake, but it's not no incomplete. We're gonna have to incomplete Kohashi in the chase position. Now, just want you guys to realize as a lead car, kind of getting into the outside zone three area late. Would like to see it a little bit more earlier, uh, but uh, that was a good enough run as a lead position. Now we're gonna have to see what Kohashi can do in the lead position because it's really up to how Suenaga's gonna give chase because uh, unfortunately Kohashi is sitting on an incomplete uh, as a chase driver. Yeah, and Su Suenaga definitely has the advantage right now, but we've seen things change in a, in a quick, quick second out here. Yeah, like the battle before we had uh, against Tanaka and Falso. We thought it was one way, uh, but something else happened. Um, we don't know until we uh, switch the drivers around. And here they are, turning back around, slowly but surely coming back to the line. Suenaga this time is gonna be in chase. He's with Atlas Tire Drift, Team Fukushima, while you have Masanori Kohashi with the Linglong Tire Drift, Team Orange. I like Kohashi's entry better, but he does have to do it, and he has to mimic the lead driver. And uh, looking at the angle difference that we have with Kohashi and Suenaga's entry, looks like Kohashi was throwing a lot more angle and being a little bit more aggressive. But once again, we always talk about, you know, mimicking the lead car. You can't just do what you want to do um, in the chase. So uh, this one, uh, most likely the contact is going to be on the chase car, which is Kohashi. Uh, that's why we're talking about the incomplete. But now we're going to see Kohashi lead and see what Suenaga is going to do in the chase position. All right, here they are, Kohashi leading. Suenaga chasing right there, bringing it back around. Suenaga struggled a little in his chase on his top 32. Let's see if he can close this proximity here through this outer zone two. Bringing it back around to the outer zone three. Keep it on track right there. Finishing strong, both drivers. But is it gonna be enough? All right, here we go. This is a good run by Kohashi, but is it good enough to flip around the incomplete that he made in the chase position? Probably not, because there's no huge mistakes Suenaga did, um, and also Suenaga applying the pressure. Um, not a whole lot, but good enough for him to be able to tell him that he's right there, um, ready to attack. So, exactly. Uh, another, uh, this might be an easier decision for the judges. All right, here we are. Nishida is going to be going left. You have Adriana going left. So there you go. The winner, moving on to the grade eight, is going to be Naoto Suenaga. All right, the veteran Suenaga is moving on. The young driver, Kohashi, knocked out here at the grade eight. Now, since they're teammates, the only Team Orange driver that is going to be in the uh, yeah, but what's the very, battles right now is going to be Suenaga. But what's very unfortunate is Kohashi was sitting third overall in points. Ooh. So that's one of our top three that are getting knocked out right now. He's sitting at 189, but he still has, there's still Takahashi and uh, Hiroya Minoa, number one and two yeah. right now. They're probably happy right now. <laughs> <laughs> hey, it's a little too late because they're all so we're still rolling through the top 16. And like I said, let's keep rolling on and right here. Leading the way is going to be, coming from the West Coast, you got Ken Gushi and the team because I'm with Power Vehicles, IS500, while he's going against Kazumi Takahashi. I was just saying, sitting second overall in points. The TMS Racing, Team Silent Tires, bringing it into this 3-2-1, the outer zone one. Looks like Takahashi's giving him a little bit of space right here, maybe too much. 
getting lost a little bit right there, coming around into this outer zone two here, wrapping it back around through the outer zone three. Wow. Gushi giving a good solid lead run there, but it looks like Takahashi gave him a little bit of space to breathe. Yeah, I think Takahashi did not anticipate. Uh, he did give him a little bit too much room. Now, Gushi making it out to the outside zone one a little late, but does fill the zone. Um, and outside zone two and three. Obviously three, there's a tire drop, but uh, finishes right on the track at the finish, right at the outside zone four. He does a good job there and makes it nice and wide. But overall, looking at Takahashi in the chase position, he is shallow on the line. He's shallow on the angle and not that close. Yeah, and he had a huge waiver toward the end too. So, yeah, so we want the chase car to run the same line. That means, you know, the chase car has to be on the outside line as well as the lead car. But I think Takahashi let Gushi go a little bit too much and he tried to play catch up. And I think he didn't realize how uh, much more speed Gushi was carrying. And maybe that's what uh, came back and bit him in the, the behind right now. But we're going to have to see now, see how Takahashi is going to lead and how Gushi is going to give chase. So here we are, Ken Gushi with a busy schedule competing in the FD US series and out here in Formula Drift Japan. I know he's got his West Coast fans out there watching. Thank you all out there watching, tuning in. We're gonna see how he's gonna do here on his second part of his run. He'll be in the chase going against Takahashi who is currently sitting second at 205 in points, seven behind the leader. And this is gonna be an upset right here if he can't move on for Takahashi that'll be two of the top three knocked out in points. And here they are coming through the chicane now. Takahashi in the lead in the green E92 BMW, but right Whoa. there, that clean right behind him. Look at that close proximity into this outer zone one. Gushi coming around the bend here into this outer zone two, trying to keep that close proximity, ripping back around into the outer zone three here. Takahashi doing his thing like he does always in the wow. lead, making a nice lead pass. All right, so let's go ahead and check this out. Takahashi does a good job in the lead position. A little bit of waiver at the initiation. Very similar line uh, to the outside zone one as Ken Gushi. And right here, it looks like Ken Gushi is a little bit more online in the chase position than Takahashi was when he was behind. And the proximity looks like it's very similar. Now, let, let's go ahead and see how... Yeah, it uh, looks like Gushi has a slightly wider line and a little closer from the beginning at the outside zone one area after initiation. He does get left behind a little bit, but he does try to keep the uh, the line wide. Same line, yeah, yeah, for sure. But yeah, he was quick on the attack from the start and then that transition, he kind of kept that same, you know, distance that he kind of lost through the transition from outer zone two to three. But here's that drone chase footage. Here's the side-by-side -side now. Yeah, a lot closer from the beginning here, Gushi. Yeah, that's a big yeah, car right the there. the line, so I'm gonna have to go with what the chase car was doing and the positioning of the chase vehicle. Both beautiful built cars, the Lexus with a 2J, the BMW with a VR. We'll see who's gonna be moving on to the grade eight. Is it gonna be Ken Gushi? Or is it gonna be Kazumi Takahashi? There's another replay, the side-by-side, -side, what the judges are looking at. Dissecting the runs on the different flaws that they saw both in lead and in chase. Checking out the chat, I see a lot of one more time and Gucci fan, uh, votes out there. But we'll see. I already put, put in my decision, so it's really <laughs> up to the other judges, you know? <laughs> it looks like boy, we should be getting some results here soon. Yeah. 
I think pretty much the leads were even to me, and I just came down with the, the, the chase. Let's get the final resource. Nishida going left one more time. Let's go one more, one more time. So we're going to see a one more time battle just like y'all out there wanted to see. A one more time battle between these phenomenal drivers. One more time, that was good enough for one more time. I believe it, but uh, I put it, I gave it to Gucci because in the chase position, Takahashi not giving it attack at the beginning, trying to play catch up, but he had to run a smaller line at outside zone one and two, and going from three to four, uh, a lot more than Gucci did. So, uh, but you know, it is close enough uh, to go for one more time. So we're gonna go for one more time. All right, till then we're gonna go to the next battle. It's gonna be against Hokuto Masuyama going against Wataru Masuyama. Matsuyama and Masuyama. Yeah, this like is Robbie a said before, this yeah. is going to be a tongue twister for me. So we have uh, Ma. What was it? Yeah, Matsuyama. He's in the A90 Super right there on the right hand side. Masuyama is going to be in the GR Yaris, and here they are approaching the three, two, one. Whoa. Look at that hard flick by the lead coming around into this outer zone one. Nice job. But there you go, the chase right behind him, filling that zone two. Bringing it back around into this outer zone two to the outer zone three. Oh. That was real deep by the chase right there into that finish. Real deep in that outer zone three. You yeah. like how I did that? Lead chase? <laughs> <laughs> Don't say the names. So let's go ahead and see this crazy flick done by Matsuyama. But because of the flick, it looks like he does throw a little bit too much angle and comes a little short at the outside zone one to two. But he does make it uh, barely. Now going from outside zone two to three, looks like Matsuyama uh, gets lost in the sauce, and he does have multiple tire off course. I don't think that's a three tire off. That's probably two. Let's go ahead and double check this to make sure. Look at the angle difference from the lead car and the chase car. Matsuyama having to cut in a little bit too much for the outside zone one to two area, but uh, keeps his pace. And right there looks like a two tire off, um, but kind of deep. Uh, in Matsuyama's uh, position. Yeah, and you know, Matsuyama isn't really surprising us too much. He did that same flick during his top 32 battle and in his qualified run, so he's very consistent on what he's trying to do and what he wants to do to make sure he's positioned right. May have kind of set him up a little bit offline, but you know, he's making it work. So we're gonna see this time around how Matsuyama is gonna do leading the way while Matsuyama is gonna be uh, chasing. Here they are turning back around. And like I was telling y'all during the top 32 and previous, uh, uh, the J2 also, it's a three or 2.3 mile track. So these drivers finish, they get to the cone at the about around the bend and then they'll do a U-turn, bringing it back around for their second part yeah, of the run. If we waited for them to drive around the whole track, not cool. Robbie would melt. Yeah, it's pretty hot. But you know what? It's it's okay because the, the battles are really exciting. And exactly, uh, and the smoke show that we're seeing. Here we are. So Matsuyama is going to be leading. Matsuyama is going to be in the chase. Good. I got it down now. Matsuyama is in the good ride. Motorsports. GR Yaris bringing it around, going against the GR A90 Supra by Matsuyama right there. Getting into that outer zone one real deep right there. Bringing it back around. Man, look at that. Oh, is he going to get lost right here? Oh. Bringing it back around. And he lost himself into that outer zone three, unfortunately. And Matsuyama right. might have made a big mistake in that chase. Yeah, so outside zone one, look at this. Was he three tires off? I think he might be. We're gonna have to see that in a different, uh... oh man. I... With or without that three tire, I might still be able to make a decision, but. Here's the drone footage right here. Bringing it around. Yeah, that's, that's very, very wide. And there you go, Matsuyama overshooting that outer zone too. All right, here you go. This is the best view right here. The chase coming around. Who is real close. But yeah, washing out right there. Yeah. Not able to and, get to that third zone. And talking about Matsuyama's lead, it was pretty cool and it was nice. But like I said, you know, the angle was a little bit too much. He had to uh, help himself get from one side, outside zone one to two. But a very nice lead. But looking at Matsu, Mat, Matsuyama's uh, lead, he does dip a tire at outside zone three, uh, but does a very good job in the lead as well. So even if the leads were the same, now we have to come, we have to revert to the chase. Matsuyama 
dipping multiple multiple tires outside zone one, outside zone two. And the only major mistake I've seen from Masuyama is uh, he's kind of far back, but at the same time only messes up at the outside zone three. We'll see here, they're checking out the side-by-side -side view, getting the right call in the books. All right, anticipating the call here by these three judges. Cusco girl, canola oil, and good ride girls waiting for the call. Who's going to be moving on? Is it going to be Hokuto Matsuyama or is it going to be Wataru Masuyama? Here they are. Right now, Matsuyama sitting eighth in the point standing, while Matsuyama is pretty far back. Yeah, sorry, the we're, we're, there's just so much sun that we we have our sunglasses on and everything, but we're having a hard time um, looking at the screens too, but. Now we're talking about the comparison. Matsuyama going almost three tires off at outside zone three. Matsuyama almost going three tires off at the outside zone one. Now, other than that, let's see how many more other mistakes that both of the drivers that did uh, in the chase position. I would say Matsuyama dips two tires off at outside zone two as well. And he does the transition way too early and ends up on the small line at outside zone three. So um, yeah, that's something that we have to look into. And those are the things that we are comparing right now. And uh, we were talking about some of the judges saying, you know, if there was gonna be an incomplete for three tires off, but uh, watching the replays, it didn't look like both of the drivers incompleted, but we're gonna go ahead and make the call uh, from the deductions that we see. All right, here you are. The results are out. Nishida is gonna be going right. Then you have Adriana going right. So right there, Wataru Masuyama is gonna get the win and he'll be moving on to the grade eight. Last year's champ, Matsuyama got knocked out here. And also he is currently eighth in position. This is the end of his weekend because of the major mistakes that he made in the chase position. Matsuyama, a former Formula Drift USA driver, is moving on to the grade eight. So yeah, hopefully the explanation Robbie gave on what they were seeing for the judges about those runs and the determination on who's winning that battle is kind of clear with y'all out there. But it looks like we have our next battle ready to take off. We're gonna be moving on to the right side of the bracket. First battle of the right side of the bracket. Waiting at the line right now, we're gonna have Thurik doing a little bit of explanation on what the judges saw out there with the runs. But here we are, it looks like we're now moving on. Number 111, Tetsuya Hifino. He'll be leading the way, going against number 212, Yutaro Oe. Kibino in the brand new Z, the Good Ride Motorsport Z. Wow, it's 38 degrees right now here up in the judging stand. Oh, that it's Celsius for those of you that yeah, do that. Because that's pretty cold if you're Yeah. I actually wouldn't mind it. It's still really good. And then Oe right here in the Awa Tire Racing. Let's see how he's going to do here on the chase. It looks like he's, he's keeping Whoa. that close, close proximity. Bringing it around, he's got to stay out of that smoke right here. Coming around to that outer zone one. Hibino doing his thing, throwing that angle early on, bringing it back around, snapping it into the outer zone three there. Nice job. I can't see Oe, he is lost right now. In that smoke trail by Hibino. Wow, Hibino doing a burnout through the whole straightaway. The style king here clears outside zone one. A lot of angle, a lot of throttle. Gets close enough outside zone two. 
does a switch back a little later than uh, we would like to see him at outside zone three. But overall, very exciting to see. And right behind him is Owe. Doesn't give, you know, too much space. But it looks like he has to run a shallow line outside zone four. Let's go ahead and check out the drone footage. Owe keeping the pressure on. Staying wide on the outside zone one. Keeps it within the track at outside zone three. A little bit shallower on the line than outside zone four. Now, let's see what Owe can do in the lead. And let's see what... Let's see what Hibino is going to do in the chase. But exactly. I know Hibino is also... Uh, a very aggressive chaser. What you guys think about that? How was that initiation and entry uh, by Hibino? I see fires right now for Hibino. Or is it fires because it's 30, oh, it's actually 35.6 degrees now. Is it fire because it's something. hot here, or is it uh, Hibino's driving? He'll, I'm pretty Hibino sure Hibino's will always driving. be wild. Yep, he is. He's always been a wild driver. He always was and always will be. All right, so we're about to go for the second half of this battle. Oe is going to be leading, and Hibino is going to give chase. All right, here we are, Oe. Going to make it happen in this four-rotor, bringing it around into this, actually three-rotor, bringing it back around into this outer zone one. Look at that, Hibino keeping that close proximity early on right there through the outer zone one. Oe unable to get all the way out to that outer zone one, swinging it back around right on the edge of that. Oh! oh. Hibino washing out right there in that outer zone three. Oh. Oh man, we were not expecting that. Let's see this again coming around this outer zone one here. You can see Oe. Oe doing a, a, a smaller line at outside zone one. And right here doesn't make it all the way out to outside zone two. Then Hibino kind of goes wider on the outside zone three area. Now I just want to see if that's going to be a three tire off. Yeah, we're going to have to, man. It's really good, too. Oh. Yeah, it looks like he beat him, is probably three tires off in that outer zone three in the chase position. Oh, man, this is, uh, this is really unfortunate. You know, I mean, if we could put a wall there, then uh, maybe... Everybody would be more alert about the going off course in the outside zone three. No, actually, no. I think, you know, they're probably aware of it. It's just that, you know, depending on the position of the lead car and depending on, you know, how quickly, I think the FD was able to do a quick uh, transition and uh, uh, Hibino kind of hung it out a little bit too much. Here's a side-by-side -side view. I mean, Hibino had a nice lead run, though. Oi, real shallow in the outer zones, one and two. So here we go. Nishida is going to be going right. Adriana going right. And then Imamura also going right. So Oi is going to get their win. Ryutaro Oi. Man, Style King Hibino is knocked out here. But you know what? Uh, this isn't the last time we're going to be seeing him. We're going to see him at the next round, and I'm pretty sure he's going to come on uh, out and show us uh, some uh, Yeah, this is wild because driving. this is wild because oh, uh, Hibino was second in qualify. OA was 15th, so he knocked out a big contender there from qualify. All right, so going on to moving on to the next battle, it is going to be Andrew Gray giving chase to Takatoshi Imamaeda. All the lower qualifiers are actually beating the higher qualifiers here because Andrew Gray was 26, Imamaeda was 23rd. Now Imamaeda is going to be giving or he's going to be leading. Now, how well will this ex four time Formula Japan champion chase Imamaeda down? We'll see here. They gave him a little push start early on whenever they did the kids walk in the intro right here. Look at that. Ray coming around into that outer zone one. Imamaida throwing what? down into the outer zone. Look at that what? proximity right there. 
can't fit nothing through between these two coming around outer zone three here. Gray real deep in that outer zone three. We'll have to take a look back at the deck. Andrew other... Gray <laughs> showing off his skills as a four-time X champion. That was that was an amazing chase run done by Andrew Gray. And let's say Ima Maida doing a great job too in the lead position. All I could say is wow, wow. And that was it almost was three tires off, but, but I think like that two. was a two tire off right there at the outside zone three. Uh, looking at the positioning. Yeah, and we just talked to him at the break. He's not feeling too hot today, and obviously the humidity, the heat, and being in his gear and everything is probably not helping the he, situation. He's but not feeling hot today. It's hot today. <laughs> hot as in <laughs> feeling great today, you know. Hey, so if he's saying he doesn't feel hot and he's driving like this, I wonder how he's going to drive if he's hot. Oh, if, uh, if he's 100%, you mean? Yeah. All right, but here he is. They're rolling back to the line. Here's another replay, the chase drone footage. Hey, but always remember that Imamaida's lead run was a good run that let the chase car give a uh, good chase too. Exactly. So now can Andrew Gray do the same in the lead position? Is Imamaida going to give chase and as aggressive as Andrew Gray? We'll see here shortly. They're taking a U-turn at the start line, lining back in their respective spots. Imamaida is going to be in the chase while Andrew Gray is going to be in the lead. This is what I'm talking about. This is what everybody has came here to see. And I know you guys out there uh, watching the live stream, this is probably what you wanted to see and the driving like this. Let's see what they're gonna do when they switch places. Right now, it's like 39.7 degrees here. <laughs> the We're just gonna stand. keep giving an it's update on that. blazing hot, but you know what? I don't care because this is gonna be an exciting run. It's gonna be a hot run right here. Andy in the front right here, coming around the 3-2-1. Ima Maida on the attack right there. Looks like he's getting a little lost. Uh -oh, uh -oh. Straightening up a little bit through that outer zone one in the chase, and he can't see nothing. He's bailing. He pulled the, he pulled the bail button right there through the eject button in outer zone two. Got lost in the sauce. And he just gift wrapped it to Gray. Look Probably this. couldn't see because of the smoke. Smoke, the sun, a bad combination. So, to do a good tandem here, we always talk about we always talk about the three, two, one cone and where you should be initiating at. Everybody should think about that. The chase position. When should you initiate after the chase or lead car? That's a big key uh, to a successful uh, initiation here and a good uh, chase run. So there you go, you can see how he had to shut down. Waiting for the results from the judges. Here we are, Nishida is gonna be going right and Adriana going right and here we are, Imamura. So there you go, Andrew Gray is gonna get the win and he'll be moving on to the great eight. Yeah, Ima Maida doing a great job um, uh, knocking out the two-time champ, Yamashita. Knocking out the two-time champ, Yamashita, at top 32, but could not knock out the four-time champ, uh, Andrew Gray, here at the great, or at the top 16. So Andrew Gray is moving on to the grade eight. But good job by both drivers. Now we're going to go back to see who's going to go against Masayama. Is it going to be Kenshiro Gushi? Current Formula Drift USA driver versus currently second in the points ranking of Formula Drift Japan, Kazumi Takahashi. We'll see here. Here they are. This is the left side of the bracket. Who's going to be moving on and who's going to be going against Wataru Masuyama? And here they are bringing it around into the 3 2 1. Gushi doing his thing into the outer zone one right there. Nice job filling that zone. But look at that proximity behind him in the chase. Bringing it back to this outer zone three. Real deep in that zone for Gushi, dipping the two tires right there. Takahashi does the same thing at the outside zone three to four area where he kind of waits because he doesn't want to risk it at the transition. So he ends up in a smaller line at outside zone three uh, transition area. Let's check this out. Everything was great, lead and chase up until here. Slow he rotation, everything. He yeah. does a slow rotation going into it where uh, he ends up not even being able to uh, clear the outside zone four area. Man, that As might... you can see, this this 
camera angle that you see. When you see a lot of the chase car, that means they are on a smaller line. Here we are, we'll see the overview right here. Nice job. And yeah, up right until here. here everything was good. Then after that, he does keep it within the track, doesn't throw angle, and has to run a smaller line at outside zone four. Yeah. Hopefully, we'll see if it's going to affect him or not. He's going to be on the lead this time. Takahashi, while Gushi is going to be giving him chase. Man, this is like a toss-up because a lot of these drivers are knocking out the higher qualifying drivers. Like Matsuyama beat Matsuyama. Matsuyama was 12th. Mat Matsuyama was 5th. Suenaga and Kohashi was about the same. It was 8 and 9. Tanaka and Fausto. Fausto was 32nd. Tanaka was 17th. Fausto moved on. Oe beating Hibino. Hibino was number 2. It's a yeah. lot of toss. Everything's like in we, the air. And we talked about it early on right there, how interesting it was going to be because we saw a lot of, uh, in the top 32, we saw a lot of upsets. And here we are seeing more upsets in this top 16. Yeah, it and a quick quick update on our heat. Um, the sun is hitting our thighs now. Yes, <laughs> and we have pants on too, so it's not the greatest. So here we are, second part of the battle. Gushi is in the chase. Takahashi in the lead. Takahashi bringing it around outer zone one. Nice job filling that zone. Gushi's got to close that proximity before he gets lost in the sauce right here through the transition into that outer zone three, bringing it back around. It looks like Takahashi's just running away from him after that zone. All right, so now we're going to have to see what kind of line Takahashi was taking uh, because he looked like he did miss outside zone four at the end. And Gushi getting left behind after the outside zone one and two area. Takahashi keeping it in track, but uh, not too close on the outside zone four area. Let's go ahead and check that out one more time. All right, the drone footage right here. Looks like Gushi wasn't as close uh, from the entry like he was earlier before the one more time battle. Yeah, the advantage he has is he filled the zone in the chase position, but took away some of the proximity, couldn't close it in and dial it into Takahashi. Yeah, so let's go ahead and check this out. The biggest deficit for me is in the chase position. Gushi gets left. Takahashi fills the gap, but wavers. And right here, Huge his mistake. transition wasn't how he should be making a transition and being very shallow. And also in the lead position, Takahashi misses the outside zone four after the outside zone three, running a shallow line. So Ravi just really analyzing these side-by-side -side views, dissecting the faults that he's seeing between both drivers in the lead and in their chase position. Who's going to be filling that last spot? Who's going to be going against Wataru Masuyama? It's the last spot on the left side of the bracket. If you want a bracket, go ahead and follow the bracket online. I found something that we've been talking about where Takahashi in his lead position, he does a late transition at the outside zone three compared to Gushi. So we'll see how much of a factor that is going to be right here. The final right here, Nishida is going to be going left. Adriana is going to go one more time. Imamura is going to be going right. So it looks like we're going to see a one more time battle between these two split decision. Wow, a lot of you that voted out there, you saw the live vote that's going on in the stream. It was a split decision. So good portion of y'all were right, but unfortunately, Adriana being the, you know, the split decision for the one more time battle, looks like we're gonna see a one more time battle between these two. This is gonna be the second one more time battle between Gushi and Takahashi. With that being said, on the right side of the bracket, we got two more battles 
to lock in the right side. Still waiting for that last spot on the left. You saw the one more time battle and we're gonna see them once again battle it out to see who's gonna fill that last spot to go against Wataru Masuyama. So let's see, you can see how beautiful it is out. Sun beaming down right now. Pretty much it was like exactly the same whether it was yesterday whenever we did qualify. So here for round four, we had 45 cars originally competing for the top 32 spots. Cut it down, took the 13 away, had top 32 earlier on this morning, about nine o'clock this morning, we had top 32 and here we are this afternoon for top 16. What you got for us, Robbie? Yeah, so I think it's the difference in um, the thoughts of the driving, but um, I was talking to Sean about this. Sean did it one more time because of, you know, the distance and everything, but we do see that Takahashi does um, do a small thing Outside zone one to two, he kind of wavers to try to, it's almost like he's trying to run away. He does a late transition uh, more later at the outside zone three and then cuts in and doesn't fill outside zone four. So pretty much he's trying to get away from the lead car. Now, Gucci is closer um, overall uh, at the beginning of the uh, run, but when he's leading, he's pretty much transitioning where he's supposed to. He fills the outside zone three where he's supposed to and he does a transition right and uh, he does have two tires off there, but at the same time, he does fill outside zone four. So that kind of gives the chase car a fair share of um, getting closer. So Gucci getting left behind, I kind of put it on the lead car, trying to run away. And uh, yeah, so everything all in the middle. Actually, this is really good that it's a one more time because um, here you go, always report. えっと、日々の選手もすごい新入角度ビタビタで、それに追走もついていて、先行も素晴らしい走りでしたが、自己自身的にはいかがでしたか。まあ、前回富士でまあトップ<笑> なんか、ご本人様がいらっしゃいましたけど。ミスターパキンって呼ばれてましたけど、いかがでした俺がヒブロだ。はい。あのですね、僕の車今回あの、リアまた100ミリ出てきたんですよ。ワイドすぎち
Sobagiri doing what he's supposed to. There was a little bit of wavering here and there, but Fukada probably not making any ma major mistakes, but he is nowhere near the lead driver. He needs to pick up the pace uh, to get closer to the lead car. Now there is uh, Itsuki, which is uh, Fukada's daughter. She is also competing in the FDJ2 series in a JZX100. She is also a very young driver and very talented. Made it into the top 16 uh, for um, uh, for uh, Ebisu round. Um, and uh, this round she barely made, uh, she was 17th, I think. So she was yeah. right outside of the uh, the window to make it into the top 16. Uh, better luck for her for next time because uh, we'll, we'll be seeing her at Okuibuki. But she is here spotting for her father um, and supporting, you know, it's the whole drifting family. We have a couple of those families here in Japan uh, where all the, the whole family is into the drifting and uh, cheering everybody on. Um, and as you saw right now, uh, the lady next to her had a cold eye. Uh, so by getting his first name, cold eye um, panel. So very friendly relationship out here, even in the spotter stand, both of the drivers and the uh, spotters. Probably wishing each other the best of luck, but hopefully we could see a winner after this run because uh, Fukada is going to be leading and Sobagiri is going to give chase. Exactly, here we are. Fukada in the lead in the JZX100 Mark II. Sobagiri in the GR86 bringing it around. Look at that, Sobagiri right there, closing it in right wow. there. Through that outer zone one, adjusting himself through that zone right there, bringing it back around to the outer zone two, keeping pressure on Fukada around this outer zone three to four. Looks like he might have been a little short on that outer zone three on the chase, but kept that proximity. Yeah, so that was a very, very close one for Sobagiri. It's a huge risk he made at the initiation. But after that, he gives Fukada a little bit of room, but stays within proximity where he can attack. Keeps the car within the track. A little bit shallow on the outside zone three, but Fukada laying down a pretty nice lead run. But I'm not sure if that's going to be good enough to compensate uh, what happened when Fukada was giving chase because he did get left behind. Exactly. Um, and there was a big distance between the two cars. Yeah, exactly. He kind of set himself up pretty bad there in that chase position. Sobagiri, very aggressive. He's been aggressive all year long right now. He's uh, sitting, I believe, fourth overall in points. So he's right there in the standings fighting for his way to the top. Yeah, as you can see, side by side. Not much to explain on the run one. Uh, with Fukada getting uh, left behind pretty hard. Yeah. Right here, we'll make it official. Nishida going left, Adriana going left, and Imamura going left. So right there, Cole Dai, Soba Gidi is going to get the win, and he'll be moving on to the grade eight. And I was just going to add, Fukada's trying to struggle in this year. He's falling pretty far behind on the points, uh, uh, overall point scale. But there you go, Cole Dai winning it, moving on. Yeah, Fukada you know, making it to all the events after the first round of Formula of Japan. Gentle Giant, really nice guy, uh, but this time he is knocked out. Unfortunately, that's it for their weekend. Sobagiri is going to be moving on, and let's see who's going to be going against Sobagiri. Is it going to be another GR86 driven by Yusuke Kusaba, or is it going to be the young, young driver driving the GR Yaris, Hiroya Minoa? I know the obvious, he'll be racing against the Cusco driver. Cusco GR car. Yeah, Cusco GR, but a Cusco driver. Here they are, coming up the strip here. Minoa in the lead in the GR Yaris, bringing it around into this outer zone. Look at that, Kusaba keeping that close proximity to the right end of his car. Into that outer zone two, swinging it back around to the outer zone three. Nice flick right there by Minoa, coming back around into that outer zone four. And I got to say, that was a very aggressive chase, but it's all entailed from a very good lead. Yeah, that was a very clean run by uh, Minoa in the lead position. I wouldn't say there was anything majorly wrong. Maybe a dip a tire here and there. Nice transition by Minoa and uh, very great uh, proximity that Kusaba is pressuring Minoa here all the way through. Good job by both drivers. Let's go ahead and check this out from the drone view from the top, both drivers very close, uh, filling the outside zones.
Kusaba not giving Minoa too much room to get away. Very good job by both drivers. This is almost like a demo. And look at Minoa. This is like a Cusco demo. It really is how close they were getting everything, but they are really good with one another, another because they do a lot of sim together. They're their teammates. They know how each other drive. They watch each other's replays all the time. So, you know, I was expecting to see this close of a battle. Now let's see what's going to happen when they switch places. Is Kusaba going to lead? Uh, is he going to be able to lay down a solid run like Minoa did? And is Minoa going to be able to stay as close as Kusaba was? We'll both GR out. vehicles, both Cusco components. Kusaba. See if he can make it happen right here in the lead this time. Coming through the chicane. Minoa in the chase right here. Look at that. Minoa early on right there up against him. Whoa. On that right door. Swinging it around in this outer Whoa. zone one. Nice job there. Bringing Whoa. it back around to this outer zone what? two. Nice job through that outer zone two. Swinging it back right there. Getting into his door. Little waiver, but making it happen right there what? in the outer what? zone four. What? Very, very aggressive driving by Hidoya Minoa in that chase. Let's see this replay. Wow, matching the angle. A little bit shallow on the line, but very close in proximity. Look at that. And the switchback right here by both of the drivers, both going wide. Man, we're going to have to see a side-by-side -side on this one for sure. This is what we like to judge because, man, that was super close. And I, from what I see, this may be a little bit closer than where Kusaba was uh, behind me, Noah. Look at this. Look at this. Same angle. Holding it all the way through, coming around into this outer zone three. Wow, a little bit of waiver out outside zone three in the chase position. Now let's go ahead and see the side by side. Ooh. I agree with the fans. Let's just do it one more time just for fun. I had a strong feeling it was going to be like this. Like I said, they do a lot of sim together. They know how their driving styles are. But we're going to see if someone right. dominated the other on this run. I'll explain. I'll explain my uh, decision after we see the all, the rest of the decisions. But, but yeah, what a phenomenal I think it's going to be. It's going to be one or the other. Well, that's a. A Cusco car? It's gonna be two J power. It's gonna be one or one more time. Oh, <laughs> thanks. Here we are, one more time from Nishida. One more time. Look at it. your answers have been answered. There, spectators out there, one more time, if like you guys want. I would like to be picky, but if Minoa didn't waver leaving outside zone three, it probably would have been Minoa, in my opinion. But because of the proximity and the placement of the car, but. At the same time, Kusaba was getting closer towards the end as well. And he did a great job in the chase position as well. And uh, we're just going to have to see it one more time. But you know what? This is a really good one more time that we want to see. Exactly. But here we are going back to the other one more time that we've already seen once before. So this is their second one more time battle between these two drivers. Man out here coming all the way from the West Coast. Kangushi and the Team Kazama with Power Vehicles IS500. He's going to battle it out against... Kazumi Takahashi in the TMS Racing Team Silent Tires E92 BMW. This is going to be interesting. This is the second one more time battle to, between these two drivers. These are the one more times that we don't mind watching, in my opinion. It's 43 degrees up here in the judging stand. It's getting hot in here. Let's go. Let's make this happen. Coming around into the outer zone one. Nice job getting to that zone right there. A little later, but still making it happen. Takahashi trying to keep that close proximity all oh. the way around. 
wavering right there through that outer zone three. I don't know if that's going to be good for him, but he did have Man. pretty decent proximity. Gucci. Third time in a row, just doing his thing in the lead position. Like, Takahashi kind of leaving late, um, losing ground, but starting to catch up, but he is running the tighter line at outside zone one and two. Gushi doing a transition where he's supposed to be doing the transition it, at. It looks like Takahashi made the same mistake he did on their last one more time battle yes. in the chase. He did a slow rotation from that transition and, and he it, wavered after exactly, that. Exactly, because I, he probably didn't have enough juice for the car to get carried over. Yeah. So we'll see. Go cast your votes out in the chat. It's right there. Who is it going to be? Gushi Takahashi one more time. The third one more time. But here we are. We got to see the second half of this battle first. Takahashi is going to be in the lead this time. Gushi is going to be in the chase. Here's that replay right here, that drone chase footage right here. And you can see going from outer zone two here, he slowly rotates in that chase position and then has a little bit of waver. Not able to get all the way to the outer zone four too. So that second half of the track, it looks like it's been very uh, difficult in the chase po position for Takahashi. We're going to see how he's going to do this time around in the lead while Kushi is going to be doing chase. All right, now we have these two drivers here ready to battle it out. Kushi giving chase. Takahashi is going to be leading. And I know there's probably like a 400 pound difference in weight of these cars. Oh yeah, they're both one VR, one 2J. Here they are coming around Takahashi. Nice flick right there through the three, two, one into the outer zone one. Gushi trying to stay inside that pocket right there, bringing in that outer zone two to that outer zone three there. Falling a little bit behind after that outer zone three, but you know, I gotta say the flick was a lot harder and more fluid than it was for Takahashi in that outer zone three. All right, so here we go. Running the wide line and also chasing the wide line by both of the drivers doing a good job. And another late transition at the outside zone three by uh, Takahashi and uh, yeah, this might be a little rough. Takahashi dipped a tire, looked like an outer zone one in that lead. Let's see it again. The overview here. Right there, you can see firsthand how much of a struggle it is to see through that smoke. Between the sunlight beating down and the uh, smoke right in front of them, that's very difficult visibility going around this track. And here they are at the side-by-side -side view. Yeah, late right there. And then when Takahashi was in the chase, unable to fill that outer zone four. So we'll see all the judges are looking at the replay, the side-by-side -side view. Here's the drone footage that they want to see for how much of that zone. Here they are bringing in that outer zone three. Uh, we're trying to watch a replay that's not this one. We're trying to watch. This isn't it. They're trying to get the replay to make sure they're making the defined call here. And this right here, I believe this is Gucci's lead right here. What's everybody's take? Checking out the poll right now. I have 67% for Gushi, 17% for Takahashi, and there's 16% for a one more time. 
you know, while we're waiting for the results here, hands down, thank you out there all the way in the U.S. West Coast. Joyce for doing this. She's the one that's putting these together. The polls for y'all to kind of chime in and vote who you think is going to be moving on and giving me something to talk about. So thank you very much. Keeping it active out here in the live chat for the live stream. So let's see, here they are bringing it back around. There they are trying to make the right call here. It's hard to see too. The visibility out here is very minimal when it comes to looking at the replays because of the sun beating down on us. But yeah, like Robbie was saying, it's 43 degrees Celsius up here in the box. It's very hot. Robbie's melting. Yeah, here you are. Uh, hats off to the crew out on the track, keeping it clean, keeping the pylons up. And man, the fans out here beating the heat, staying out there. If you're listening to us here, local, in the area, make sure you're hydrating. It's super hot. The sun's beating down. At the same time, make sure you guys check out the vendor booths out here. Give some love to them. We have some uh, Formula Drift Japan merch, but let's see. I think we might have a result for the outcome right here. This is the second one more time battle right here. So Robbie Nishida is going to be going left. Adriana is going left, and here we are. Ima Murray is going to be going left. So all three judges are going left. So right there, coming from the West Coast, you got Ken Gushi that's going to be getting the win, filling that final slot on the left side, going against Wataru Masuyama in the grade eight. All right, just, you know, the explanation there, there's a few areas where Takahashi was smaller on the line in the chase position. He did a wavering at the outside zone three, and it looked like he was really, really using the line and the shallowness of the car to his power to catch up to Gushi, where Gushi was a little bit more honest in his driving in the line and the angle, trying to attack from the beginning instead of trying to reel in the driver at the end. Um, and... Uh, it's That's not, the results it's right not there. just about driving fast. This is just what we were trying to say. Yeah. Yep. But no, they had to analyze and make sure they're picking out the right spots on the track through those replays and stuff. I know it took a little bit of time. We were trying to get the right replays up because we have to talk to, the, you know, getting the, the guys in the back to get the right replays up on the screen so they could check it out. But hey, we got the results and here we are. We're down to our last battle of the top 16. Yeah, here we go. We're going to take a short break after this. We'll be right back uh, after these short messages. Maybe soon. But I guess we're not gonna go. I guess we're not going to the commercial. So how you doing, Kenny? I'm doing uh, really swell, sweltering hot because it's 42 degrees uh, Celsius out here. But no. You know, it's beautiful weather, so I'm not going to complain. Yes, it's hot, but it's beautiful weather. Yeah, it's a smoke I'm, show. I'm okay. I'm okay yeah. with it. I mean, I just, just want to hurry up and sh take a shower. but um. <laughs> We're trying to figure out, like I said, we got one more battle. This is it. It's a one more time battle between Hiroya Minoa and Yusuke Kusaba. We're waiting for them to get their cars ready for the battle. And it looks like they're both getting on track right now. We're going to take a short break. So we are taking a short break. So we'll be right back. They're going to get their cars. All right, so no commercial. Let's Just go. <laughs> Just kidding. Psych. Oh, we're not going to put you guys through that misery right now. Hiroya Mino is actually heading to the burnout box right now. Yusuke Kusaba is falling right behind him. If you guys didn't see their um, first battle, insane proximity from one another. But we're going to see how this time around, how they're going to battle it out and who's going to win. Is it going to be another one more time or are we going to see a defined winner in this battle? Um, 
big thing I highlighted is, is these two, if you go to their social media, they do a lot of driving together on the sim. So that's a big thing that, that's the reason why we saw such a good tandem battle between the two is because they know the way they each, each of them drive and what their weaknesses are. So go take them, go give them a follow. Baki, that's uh, Yukusaba's Instagram. You can go check him out. And then Hiroya Mino also has his out there. Just go search for him and you'll find them for sure. Yeah, so give them, give them some love. Check them out. But we'll see pretty soon once they get their tires warmed up. We'll, uh, there you are. You can Is see it on screen now. Probably have to just, you know, take off the surface off of the tires because uh, it's probably super blazing on the asphalt. Oh, probably yeah. don't need any warming up. So they got a few runs. Yes, checking out the chat, seeing what you guys are saying. Yes, it's hot. I appreciate y'all out there chiming in, giving us a little bit of love. And yes, we're not getting no break. They're going to make us uh, fight through, make it happen. We need to get Robbie a water. As he's, look, he's zoned out. I got some tea. There you go. JDM tea. So we'll see here. Looks like. No. Nah. This is uh, whiskey and <laughs> <laughs> it's beer. <laughs> so it looks like Hiroya Mino is now at the line, ready to go. And right over the crest of the hill by the Dunlop sign, you have Yusuke Kusaba coming up. But here we are. Lined up, ready to go. Cusco battle between these two. Yeah, it's really, really. Oh, the sun's kind of going down. Nice breeze going. Yep, got the clouds really coming liking out this now. right now. But uh, let's go ahead and see this. The one more time battle of these two great drivers. Here they are coming around. Minoa coming into the outer zone. Look at Kusaba not giving him any room to breathe. Back around through this outer zone two here. Swinging it into this transition to outer zone three. Nice job, Kusaba taking a little bit of a shallower line in that chase position through that outer zone three. Wow, I would have to say the line on the lead car in the Yaris and Minoa is very, very good. Running the outside line, right on the line, doesn't dip a tire there outside zone one, but Kusaba at the same time, crazy amount of proximity. One tire off at outside zone three, not as a hard of a uh, switchback, uh, for the chase car. Now, talking about the proximity, I'm almost watching a replay of what we just saw earlier. A little bit more shallower on the angle in the chase position. Right here at the outside zone three as well. Doesn't fill the outside zone four uh, because he is on a smaller line. Yeah, for Kusaba, definitely. But uh, Hiroya, man, way to fill that outer zone four. He was right on the edge of the track. But man, Kusaba, his proximity coming in from outside zone or the initiation to the outside zone one, getting to the outside zone two area. Very, very good. Um, he could pretty much reach out. If it was a left-hand drive car, he could probably reach out and touch his rear wing uh, with his left hand. Yeah, I love that proximity that he had from the start, but we're gonna see how Hiroya does on his turn in the chase. <laughs> you know what he did earlier? He was like, oh, oh, you, oh, that's what you're gonna do? All and right. I, I guarantee his mom- what I'm gonna do. He don't even know his mom's his spotter. She's probably in his ear right now telling him, like, you need to turn up at the start. Make it happen from the start, but finish it all the way through. If I was a spotter right now, I would be like, hit him. <laughs> give him a, don't, no, don't, don't, don't do that. Give him don't a little that, love no. tap. There don't you go. Do that. But like we said, these are teammates, friends outside of here. They like to do a lot of sim driving together. And that right there tells you they do a lot of driving together because they know each other. Oh, oh looks like we have a pylon touch but they do a lot of uh, driving together so they know each other's uh, pros and cons and, and where their strengths and weaknesses are. Wow, very impressive, very close, very exciting. I mean, is this a, is this a Cusco demo going on here or? I mean, I know Cusco's probably getting a lot of pictures right now for a demo. Uh, photo, but we're going to see which one of these Cusco drivers is going to move on to the great eight going against Koldai Sobagiri. And I got to say, I, this top 16 lasts a good amount of time here. Here we are moving in, moving 
up, and let's see if Hiroya is going to close that proximity here, taking a shallower line, but still getting out to that outer zone one, bringing it in. Look at that, a lot tighter right there through that outer zone two. Let's see this transition back around. Oh! oh! Washing out in the chase position by Hiroya in that outer zone three. Man, the concentration uh, of the 13-year-old maybe came a little short uh, before you cross the finish line because I think he was trying to fill in that proximity because he came a little uh, short on the straight. He was a little bit behind, so he had to run a smaller line, and he did everything in his power he can to get closer to Kusaba. But you know what? This time, it might not be his weekend because Kusaba, in the lead position, does a great job and uh, uh, fills the zones as he needs to. A little bit short on outside zone two. One tire off at outside zone three. But that might be a major mistake made by Minoa. Yeah, he definitely risked it all right there. I think the difference from the earlier one was he got closer after one, where earlier he was already close from one. So he positioned himself to, um, how can I say, he kind of pinched himself getting into uh, uh, Kusaba's door right before the outside zone two, which gives him not much room to play with to do a transition, which carried him out to the outside zone three and three tires off, almost three tires off. There you go, all three judges are gonna be going right, so Yusuke Kusaba is gonna get the win and fill that last spot for the great eight. Kusaba taking out his teammate right here for Cusco. But I just realized that the top three the top three drivers are not in the competition yeah, anymore. And they all got knocked out in the top 16. See, do, you, do you like the way we just did that? You know, the judges has a script and uh, we See, just went yeah, by the script so it. we can make the championship funner. I knew it. I was trying to read into you all this right? whole time for the last yeah, four right. years and I'm finally catching on. Yeah, right. I'm just joking. <laughs> There's no way. How could we even come up with this uh, scenario that we have? Hey, but the percentage show on here, these guys out here that are watching, they're spot on. I know you and... Uh, you and Sean are on the chat. That's who's mostly talking. It's just you two in the chat room right now talking to me, right? Look at the confused faces. I wish they had the camera on me so you can see the confused faces. But no, I'm just joking. Y'all out there that are viewing in, putting your votes in there, amazing job because you guys obviously can predict what's going to happen. Don't you got, man, I mean, you guys are better than I am. I mean, it's time to retire. Come on, Sean. <laughs> no, Sean's but... Uh, it's never a hundred to zero, and I always get that. I see online, you know, people don't agree and disagree. Um, oh, uh, we're going to commercial. We're going to commercial. See you all.
究極の静かさと安全性オンロードオフロード世界中で活躍するケンダーその信頼を支える静音性安定性と対魔法性世界が認めた技術と信頼を街乗りである高品質と納得の価格タイヤのポテンシャルをあなたにケンダー What's up guys, it's Freddy Gospel and I use RSR suspension on all my drift cars. I love RSR. EO RSR Ichiban. In a world of extremes. This is where they're refined. The real deal. Cusco. Dental to Kaksin. Ogura Clutch no technology of Gyoshi. Champion of Tortame no Clutch. Ogura Racing Clutch. ORC. Man, what a top 16. We're going to be moving now on to the great eight here for round four of the 2023 G-Shock Presents Formula Drift Japan here at Sportsland Sugo in the Miyagi Prefecture. It's beautiful, it's hot, and man, it has been a smoke show in this top 16, but man, I'm, we're moving on. We're going yes, to the we next are. stage. We're moving on. The sun is blazing on us. It's 40 degrees right here on the judging stand, and now we are into the great eight. We have some of the unusual drivers uh, that are in 
or making it higher into the uh, ladder, we have Oe, Gray, Sobagiri, Saba, Masuyama, Gucci, Suenaga, and Fausto. And right now, the top three point stand, uh, points winner right now are out of it. They're out of yes, they're the run out. for podium. But you saw earlier on the screen right there, the burnout box. It looks like they're ready to battle out. You have Yukio Fausto, 32nd in qualify. Here he is in the grade eight. Who would have thought he took out the number one qualifier, Kanta, moved on. He took out, um, what is it, Tanaka. But is he going to be able to knock out Naoto Suenaga? And I know they probably had a lot of practice with one another because they both, you know, utilize Ebisu as their home course. But is it enough? Because Naoto Suenaga, he's been around for quite some time. And there you go, the fans battling it out with this heat. Yeah, Got so him. any predictions, guys, let us know. But uh, I do have a prediction here. It's going to be up to how well Suenaga is going to match Fausto's angle because when Fausto is on, he's on, he throws a lot of angle. Suenaga doesn't throw so much angle, but he's very precise. So and aggressive will, on the he chase. Will, he will have proximity. So exactly. really, it's really up to that. So here we are. About to start our great eight. Make it happen here. Fausto in the chase. Now to Suenaga in the lead. Oh, there you go. Looks like we got a pylon touch. Now to Suenaga in the Atlas Tire Drift. Team Fukushima 370Z has a facelift as a 400Z. VR powered going against Yukio Fausto in his side you know, X Japan with she bought the tire Liberty Walk. I want to go 15. back. I want to go back and find who's been doing the most pylon touches at the start. Get the stats on it. We'll see here. They're going to get the turnaround now. And speaking of turnaround, they are turning around after every run because this is a 2.3 mile international track, massive track bringing it back around through the track to do their other side. So it's one gets a lead and the other one chases while then it'll flip around. And so the judges can see both ends of the driving here. But this time around, Suenaga is going to be in the lead and Fausto is going to be in the chase. All right, here they are coming around. Look at that Fausto coming in on the inside right there, bringing it back around to this outer zone. One, oh. Looks like he's finding himself falling behind through Suenaga, and he's in that smoke trail right there, trying to find his way through. Suenaga just kind of sprinting through the track without him. Not the tandem battle we want to see between these two. Yeah, so the big fault that Fausto did was his placement at the initiation. He shot out where Suenaga was going in towards outside zone one. So pretty much he kind of threw it away at the initiation maybe because he went straight instead of making the turn uh, for the initiation where uh, I, I wish he was actually darting the car more towards the inside of the uh, turn, going to the outside zone one, uh, just like how Suenaga did. But right here, that was a huge gap made. Even though they were really close at the beginning at the initiation, not a good mimic by the chase driver, Fausto. And that's like a 10 car gap right there. That's pretty bad. Yeah, that's not good at all for Fausto. We're going to have to see how he's going to lead this time. But like I said before, Suenaga loves being in that chase position. We're going to see how close the proximity he could get to him. Because it looks like he struggled a little bit in his top 32 battle, keeping that close proximity. But he's uh, dialing it in more and more. you got Fausto fans right there. Not only in person, but I know they're here in the live chat. We'll see how it goes for him while he is in the lead this time. All right, they're reset and ready to go. Aria, right now, Yukio Fausto sitting a little bit better in the points race against Suenaga. Suenaga needs this to get himself into the top 10, and here he is coming around. Look at that aggressive flick by Fausto, throwing it all down, putting it on the line right there, deep in the outer zone. Oh, but too much right there, making contact. 
Too much rotation out of that outer zone one. Suenaga shutting down right there. The contact made with Fausto. You can see the damage made to Fausto's car. I told you my prediction. I said angle, right? <laughs> <laughs> that was too much angle by Fausto. Um, he did come to a halt in the middle of uh, the track from outside zone one to two because he was uh, rotating and over-rotating, and right there, Suenaga coming in hot from the outside zone one. There was contact, uh, but obviously that's gonna be on the lead car. We'll see. You can see the damage right there sustained to Fausto's car. Yeah, I hope Fausto can just make a right because there's a path he can go into the track, but um, yeah. I'm not sure he's taking a stop right there. I think he's stopping there to see if he can cut through the track right yeah, I there. Think, I think they're communicating so they can get the car out of there because it looks like he's dragging his bumper. Um, and I'm not sure how much damage his vehicle has. Uh, the track right now is getting cleaned up by the track workers. Thank you very much to working on the track in this heat under the sun, but let's go ahead and make that official. Right here, Nishida going left, Adriana going left, and Imamura, so right there, it's official. Naoto Suenaga is gonna get the win, and he'll be moving on to the final four. Congratulations to Suenaga from uh, working at the, you know, ABC Circuit in Tohoku Safari Park. Um, very, very close to here, so this is almost like home uh, for their team as well. So there you go, Team Fukushima. All the girls are excited. Suenaga is moving on, and uh, tough luck for Fausto. Very great job and great driving, um, and I think that's what Suenaga did. Suenaga got Fausto back because Fausto had beat Kanta at the, he <laughs> the did. top 32, and uh, yeah, he, he got him back for us. Like, big bro got his uh, uh, little bro's back. Exactly. This is the only uh, Ling Long Tire, or well, actually Atlas Tire Drift team, uh, orange car moving on and right here you can see that over rotation and the contact so Inaga's testing his car out driving back around the track making sure the steering's good but looks like his team's gonna have to take a look at that before he gets to his final four battle all right so it looks like uh, Fausto's car is uh, able to drive and they're gonna drive it into the pits a different area uh, going back to the pit road, but uh, there's an opening. So instead of dragging the car all the way around the track or back around, we're gonna go ahead and get the car situated right here and uh, go on from here. But I did see uh, Gushi and Masayama pulling out of the pit road. Going and, down to the burnout box. Yeah, that's gonna be an interesting battle too, but uh, there you go, a wild looking vehicle with a Liberty Walk body kit on this S15 driven by Ikeo Fausto. Half spin, spun out at the outside zone one to two area and yeah. caused the contact from the chase vehicle. Yeah. Now he's going back to his pits. Um, and uh, he made it up to the grade eight, but that's gonna be it for his him and his team not gonna be able to move on anymore. Exactly, I'm very unfortunate for him. I know he wanted to bring the trophy. It's his wife's birthday tomorrow. So ha early yeah, happy, happy birthday, birthday to you. We'll give you a birthday shout out for sure. You know, unfortunately he wasn't able to get that victory against Suenaga. But like Robbie yeah, said. How, how could Suenaga do that to Fausto? I know, I'd bring that it's up Fausto. to him. Yeah, I would, if I was him, I'd be like, yo man, I'm trying to give this trophy to my wife and you're blocking that, it's like, that's messed up. Exactly. That's just straight messed up. <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> but no, this is no, competition. This is what's going yep. down now. It, but next, it is what it is. Yep. we're going to see who's going to battle it out against Suenaga. Yeah. Is it going to be Ken Gushi coming all the way from the West Coast? I don't know. Does he have jet lag? I know. You, have you asked him about that jet lag, if it's has, affected yeah. him or anything? Yeah, of course. But here he is. I don't know. Some people, you know, just like that. Or, uh, you know, is Wataru Masuyama, who has suffered through jet lag doing the same thing Gucci's doing, but this year he's taken off from FDS. Exactly, it's reversed now. Yeah, he's focusing 100% on his program here in Japan. I gotta say what's cool though is, so last year, Ken Gucci was driving the Lexus RC, and he had to do the struggle of obviously jet lag, but then also learning a car that's the opposite side steering. But this year he has the US Lexus IS500, 
so he doesn't have to battle that out, change it around. You know, muscle memory is everything, and he's yeah. a very talented driver. Been around the game for a very long time. Yeah, he, he's driving it, uh, driving a left-hand drive vehicle in the states, and now he's driving a left-hand drive vehicle here. Exactly, and he will be doing the world time attack in that Lexus RC. So I'd like to see that too happen in Australia. Now let's go ahead and see Masayama. I know they haven't faced each other since probably maybe in the states or something um, in a battle. I may be wrong, but let's go ahead and check this out. Gucci leaving the chicane and Masayama giving chase. Here they are coming around Masayama trailing him right there, making a regressive approach into that outer zone one right there. Taking a little bit away from his angle, but Gucci filling that zone, bringing it back around outer zone two, flicking it back Ooh. into the outer zone three there. Masayama trying to mimic everything that Gucci's throwing down, but Gucci Man, making you know, it a nice pass. Since Gucci's car is big, it looks like it's kind of a boat floating around, but it's actually pretty fast because a lot of these drivers can't make it get any closer in proximity. They, they, they come to an area where they're close enough, but they can't just get right onto the door like the one uh, battle that we saw with Kusaba and Minoa. So maybe it is because his car, it's a lot lighter than the RC he had. Uh, Masayama, I'm not sure if he's still getting used to the car with the uh, GR Yaris. Um, but uh, both drivers doing a great job. And like I said, I'm just being a little greedy because Masayama's chase run was pretty good, um, keeping, staying on the same line as a lead vehicle. And Gucci, once again, doing a copy paste uh, lead run from the earlier battles that we've seen. So a uh, very good job by both drivers. Now I just want to see how Masayama is going to lead and how Gucci is going to give chase. No, I think it is what it is with this IS500 is they don't want to hit these doors. These dry carbon doors. So yeah, this car's big, but man, they took out every ounce of weight that they could to make this car as light as possible, being a four-door boat that it is. Both cars competing are both two Js. And like you said, both one former FDUS driver, one current FDUS driver. Ready to battle it out on the second half. Gucci's got to glue himself to the door of Masuyama's Yaris. Masuyama in his Good Ride Motorsports GR Yaris, while Gucci, that beautiful brand new Lexus IS500 by Kazama, Team Kazama with power vehicles. Kazama power vehicle coming in deep. I know they're cheering on Gucci right now, bringing it into this outer zone one, into that three, two, one, the outer zone one right here, bringing it around. Look at that, moving it to him right there early on into the outer zone one, bringing it back around to the outer zone two here. Let's see the flick back around. Oh, Masuyama really deep wide. right there, way wide in that outer zone three. Gucci on the inside of that portion. Cause man, if Gucci, I think if Gucci would have followed him, he would have been definitely three, three, three tires, tires out. off. Yeah. Here you go. Looks very close from the beginning. A nice line by uh, the lead driver, Masayama, and a good chase by Gucci. A little bit too wide on the outside zone, too, and that's actually three tires off for Masayama, so this might be an easy choice for us because... Um, yeah, Masayama went, was two tires yeah, at outer went a zone two. Too wide. And then looks like outer zone three, he was uh, three tires off. And like I said, if, if Ken Gucci was following him tight in that outer zone three, it could have been disastrous for Gucci being laid out all the way outside of that track. Wow, Masayama doing a great job all the way up until outside zone three. And here we are, Nishida, Adriana, and Imamur are going left. So there you go, the West Coast coming in. Ken Gushi getting the victory, moving on to the final four against Naoto Suenaga. Wow, Gushi, it's a big car and he is making the vehicle very, he's very comfortable in the vehicle here at Sugo. It's a big track, it's an on throttle track. And maybe that's where this car is supposed to be driving at and uh, he is doing a great job uh, campaigning this vehicle in the lead and the chase position. Masayama, a little bit too wide on the line, uh, but a great job giving chase, and uh, hopefully we can see him in the next round coming in a little stronger. All right, we'll see here. Next, battling it out on the right side, the first battle here for the final four. Who's gonna lock in this spot? Is gonna be the young Yutaro Oe, or is it gonna be Andrew Gray, four-time champ. Here they are, Oe is in the lead this time. 
Gray is in the chase. Here they are, bringing it 3 to one Gray locking into him right here, into this outer zone one, bringing it around. That rotary screen, they oh. pass him. Oh, washing out right there in outer zone two, kicking him offline, oh. outer zone three. Oh. But oh, yeah, at the same, we gotta take a look at that. <laughs> There's a lot of it things got, going on on track. Yeah, it got real messy at the end right there. Right here, Oe doing a good job at outside, or could have been a little deeper, but right here. Andrew Gray goes off track. And that's an incomplete in the chase position, but I would have to say that would probably be an incomplete in the lead position too, because it's a unchaseable lead coming to a halt, losing angle going from outside zone three to four. Yeah, we'll see it right here. This is a perfect view. We're going to see how Oi, after outer zone three, he pretty much lost angle and shot straight into the inside. See right there, boom. Now Huge I, correction. Now I'm wondering why Andrew Gray went wide. Did something happen to the lead vehicle? Oh, no, not really. Gray just went wide. Washed out a little wide in yeah, that outer so zone too. A very messy run by both of the drivers. Here they are taking their turnaround. Flipping rolls here. Boy is going to be in the tra chase. Gray is going to be in the lead. A lot happening on that last run. This is where they both got to clean it up. Oi is going to be in the chase. Gray is going to be in the lead. Gray needs to make it happen right here. Throw down a solid run. Here he is coming out of the 3-2-1. Getting into that outer zone one. A little middle to late right there. Bringing it back to the outer zone two. Nice job in that outer zone two and that outer zone three right there. Oi trying to close that proximity. But keeping a fair balance all the way through. So considering both of the vehicles one, uh, in completing on the first run, looks like Andrew Gray does a good job in the lead. Oe keeping the pressure, but not making it all the way out to the outside zone too, but not too bad in the chase position. Um, Here's the overview, the placement of the vehicles in each of these zones. You know, a little bit of a gap right there, a sizable gap throughout the course. Oye not able to close it except right there, but then loses it once again. So we'll see here. The side-by-side -side view between these two drivers Oe leading on the left. Andrew Gray leading on the right. Huge mistake by Andy on the left side whenever he was in the chase from outer zone two. Here's the replay once again. We'll see here. Judges analyzing every aspect and every angle of this run. So what are you seeing out here, Robbie? So, yeah, so we were watching the replays and I was watching the replays on um, our tablet too that we might put Gray's going off track at the outside zone two on Oe, because Oe lost heat going from outside zone one and he shallowed up, cut a smaller line, and he cut the inside clip where he kind of gave Gray nowhere to go. And here we are, there you are right there too, and then we got two votes going right right there, so Andrew Gray is gonna get the win and move on to the final four.
congratulations to Andrew Gray, but also Rutado Oe coming all the way up into the grade eight right there. Qualifying 15th, but unfortunately getting knocked out by the four-time champ. Now let's see how Gray is going to do against these next two. Who's going to battle him out? Which GR86 is going to win this? Is it going to be Koldai Sobagiri, who's in the in the lead lane right now, or is it going to be Yusuke Kusaba, the Cusco racing car? Is All it right. going to be the Shibata motor car or the Cusco car? Yeah, so going back to the explanation of that, um, it looks like OA kind of pinched Gray's line going from outside zone one to two. Gray had to shallow up, then re-angle himself going outside zone two, which kind of made him force him to go off the track at the outside zone too, and that's pretty much a, a big deficit. But let's go ahead and check out this battle. Here we are coming around. Ooh. One 2J power, one VR power, bringing it into this outer zone one. Oh. Nice shot, looks like Kusama's making a little bit of an adjustment through that zone, catching himself back up here into this touch and go to the, or not touch and go, the outer zone three here into that outer zone four. Not as close proximity as we saw with his last battle. You said a little bit of adjustment. <laughs> yeah, I know. That he was kind of big, yeah. yeah. No, but right here, once again, this is kind of like uh, the difference between Fausto and um, Suenaga. He shot out in the different direction where he kind of shot out a little bit too wide at the initiation and went straight instead of going towards the outside zone one, which is a little bit more on the inside, where that helped create the gap in between Sobagiri and after that, so it, um so, I'm sorry, Kusaba had to play catch up and have to run a very small line through outside zone one to two. And uh, the rest of it, as you've seen, Sobagiri doing a good job. Kusaba, once again, not taking a wide line through outside zone three to four as well. So not a good chase, but a good lead. So now we're gonna have to see what's gonna happen when they switch places. All right, there they are heading back to the start line. Like I was saying, Sobagiri right there in the screen, rocking the VR, while you have Kusaba, the white Cusco racing GR86 with the 2J. Sobagiri right now, he's sitting pretty nice right now in the point standing because he is sitting fourth overall in points. Uh oh, something is going on. Is it, are they just? Oh, they're just taping up the lip spoiler. Yeah, so Sobagiri sitting pretty nice in the point standing, sitting at fourth. This is going to definitely bump him up big time if he can move on to the final four. Kusaba sitting in the tenth position right now. So right there, we got Umechan with the mohawk next to him with the almost a mohawk and a uh, mullet. <laughs> it's Kobayashi. It's a ponytail. <laughs> it's a ponytail. Yeah, then uh, Kuro-chan, the starter in the front. That's uh, uh, that's Sean, Sean Adriano's uh, boys right there. That's right. Yeah, Sean's boys. He's got the man bun, you mean. That's right. Yeah, Sean said, too. That's the next generation Japanese guys right there. The young boys out there. All right, looks like his car is squared away, ready to make this second pass. We're gonna see how Sobagiri's gonna lock himself to Kusaba here on the second part of the run, the last run of the great eight. Who's gonna be filling that last spot to the final four? Here they are bringing it back around. Sobagiri, nice job on the proximity all the way around, mimicking exactly what Kusaba's doing, flipping back around into this outer zone three there. Yeah, definitely closer proximity by Sobagiri. Yeah, Sobagiri. You know, in Sobagiri, he does different other drift events too, and I've been watching his social media. He's been stepping up in his other leagues, and it's insane to see him come out here. He's sitting fourth overall in the point standing. Yeah, I think he just, he just, uh, he was at the D1 event. Yes. Um, probably a couple weeks or something like that, and he won that event too. And uh, winning, or get, coming in second at Fuji. He's on a roll. He it's really is. like a podium is. rush for him. Because he, looking at this right now, no matter what happens, if he beats Kusaba, 
He's Let's, on the podium for sure. And here we are, one going left, two going left, and here you go, all three judges going left. Cold Ice Obagini gets the win, and he will be moving on, filling that last spot into the final four. And like I said, the uh, podium rush, Sobagidi, guaranteed podium now. Whatever he does, he's going to be on the podium. So, Yes, you're 100% right. No stress. Second, yeah, no no sweat, man. For a second, if he would have been knocked out, Ken Gushi would have been locked in, guaranteed for a podium. But looks like Ken Gushi's got to fight his way to the finals here. Throw down and make it happen going against Naoto Suenaga. Because that right there is the end of the grade eight. And here we are. We have made it to the final four. This is it, Sportsland, Sugo. <laughs> I thought we we we're we we're, we're kind of like the sideshow up here, and we don't get you know the queue the queue so much. So I thought you're going into the commercial right now or something. <laughs> no. But no, um, they're they're letting us uh, talk on the live stream. So bear with us. They're allowing like, us, giving yeah. us. Yeah, there might be there might be some um, um, small imperfections here and there, but uh, um, yes us so we'll try our best but how are you guys enjoying the show until now i mean i think this is a great turnout sugo the qualify is always kind of a slow start and it kind of gets me you know uh i get a little irritated watching but once the tandem starts it looks like everybody turns it up and uh does a great job and uh, i think everybody's been doing a great job and we've been seeing some pretty uh close tandem yeah, but I think these fans are ready to see this final four start. The battles kick off. Because like Robbie said, what I love about this facility is how exciting the track is whenever they're full running at tandem. It's a smoke show, and then the uh, chase driver's battling it out, trying to fight that smoke cloud right behind them from the outer zone two to the outer zone three. And then all these spectators are kind of in your face right there on the outside of those zones wrapped around it. In but your unlike personal space, but or? unlike us, our personal space, we're a hundred yards roughly or a hundred feet in the air, not it, suspended. It's still, it's still 40 degrees. I know, not suspended in the air, but we're above outer zone one. Got the bird's eye view. We can see all the zones from up here, but then we have the great camera shots and angles from our crew out here. So hats off to the camera guys out there, the Sportsland Sugo members. Thank you all for taking care of the track, giving us this beautiful facility, carving out FDJ2. But what, what, what does Robbie got to say? A lot of love out to all y'all sticking around, watching this uh, live stream, and also a lot of love back home. Well, it's not home for me, <laughs> but uh, everybody in Formula Drift USA. We'll see you guys in a couple of weeks because I think the next round in the U.S. is going to be in Seattle. So um, we'll, yeah. we'll, we'll give you Sean back after today. We'll send him back. We'll put him on a plane tomorrow because we don't need him anymore. <laughs> <laughs> oh, he'll, be, he'll be back. We'll use you for the no, rest no. of the year. They're like, we don't need him either. They're going to send him back. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. See? This is nice when you don't give somebody a mic and you just start talking trash at exactly. them. Exactly, he can't. They can't defend even do himself. a comeback. Yeah, you know? can't defend himself. Yep. No, but, but yeah. seriously, um, hopefully you guys are enjoying the show because uh, uh we're not going to have Kenny after Okayama, which is the last round this year, and uh, I'm going to try to break it in a little bit, little by little, because I think uh, Kenny's been doing a great job for Formula Drift Japan, and uh, you know you've been around for so many years after the COVID started, and you were kind of like a temporary guy, and now you yes. became the guy here. Um, Got to thank you. So everybody, a lot of love to him and uh, a lot of uh, good luck, uh, best of luck in his future um, and, you know, whatever you're going to be doing, wherever you're going to yeah, go. Yeah, well, I'll be going to Texas. So all y'all out there, I know some of the Texas Drift Series, but let me know what's out there in Oklahoma. If any of y'all out there from Oklahoma and know the Drift Series, what's going on, I'd love to come out to those, check them out, bring out my JZX100. Oklahoma? Yeah, I'm right on the border of Texas and oh, Oklahoma. Oh, okay. I was so like, yeah, definitely, you just said Texas, and now you're like Oklahoma. Yeah, so definitely DM me, you know, hit me up. Let me know what's going on out there because I would love to come out. I'm not the best drifter. Robbie can tell you that because he picks on me on the course. But oh, he's good. I try to, you know, if just you have do fun. A, if you can do a figure eight, you're a good driver. It's everything else that comes into it. That's the hard part. That's true. And right now we see, oh, uh, Suenaga got to the leading, but he's going to be chasing first. Gucci he got a little is gonna excited. Be leading, yeah. But yeah, unfortunately, yeah, my time here, I'm not retiring from FD Japan. I was just a fill-in for COVID. 
because the whole country lockdown. I was living in Japan. I'm in the United States Air Force, and unfortunately, I'm getting stationed out in Texas. My time here in Japan is up, but let's see whose time it's up here in the final four and who's not going to be moving on to the final. Is it going to be Naoto Suenaga right there in the black 370Z with the 400 facelift, or is it going to be coming all the way from the West Coast? We say that every single time. We got, he's we got coming out from way back. He's representing the future. Here. Ken oh, Gushi. That's a there you go. Here he is. Been around for a while. Ken Gushi leading the way into that 3-2-1. Into this outer zone one. Not bad through that zone right there. Suenaga looks like he's giving him a little room to breathe. Let's see if he's going to close that proximity into this outer zone two to this outer zone three here. Not bad by both drivers right there. Suenaga. Wow. Once again, I am not even... Um I'm so used to watching Gushi's lead. It's almost a copy-paste. Everything is good. Makes it out to the outside zone one. Does a good job at outside zone two. Um, a lot of throttle throughout the track. A nice area to do a switchback. Maybe one tire off at outside zone three, uh, but very good run. And uh, watching Suenaga giving chase. I'm not gonna say very, very close, but very close. Um, and uh, he's keeping a pressure on onto Gushi. And we all know that uh, he's a veteran of a driver, a very good driver. A little bit shallow looking at the angle from this um, drone view. Overall from outside zone three to four. It looks like Suenaga doesn't make it out to the outside zone four either running a shallower line. But um, we're gonna go ahead and uh, have that in mind and let's see what's gonna happen when these two drivers change places, switch places and uh, let's see what Gushi is going to do when he is chasing uh, Suenaga. Yeah, we're going to have to see how he's going to do adjusting himself into that chase, but he's got to be able to fill the zones, get himself all the way out there. But, you know, he doesn't really have to stretch himself because that is quite the size car, the IS500 right there. Brand new build by the Team Kazama with Power Vehicles crew, making it happen this year, debuting it from the Lexus RC that they were running last year. All right, now they are set and they are ready to go. Looks like Kudoda, the starter, is about to hit that switch for the start signal and kick off the second half of this battle, of this first semifinal battle here at the 2023 Formula Drift Japan. Here they are waiting for the light. Suenaga in the lead, Gushi in the chase. Coming through the chicane now, we got a clean break here. Left side of the bracket, who's gonna lock it into the finals right here? Is it gonna be Suenaga coming in that initiation, bringing it around, Gushi right here, taking a little bit of shallow over line in that outer zone one, but coming back around to the outer zone two here. Swinging it back, trying to keep that close proximity to Suenaga all the way into this finish. All right. A good battle between these two vehicles. There are small mistakes made by both drivers in the lead and in the chase position. But proximity, very close. But there are small things that Suenaga made mistakes in the chase position and Gushi making mistakes in the chase position. It looks like Gushi's mistakes happened more earlier in the track. Outside zone one, doesn't fill the outside zone one as well. Does okay at outside zone two. After the switchback, he does make it all the way out to the outside zone four. Let's go ahead and see the side-by-side -side view. Seems like Gushi's a little bit closer in proximity, but the beginning of the track, it looks like Suenaga is on a better line chasing. But after this right here, yeah, it looks like he runs in, in to a smaller line towards the end. We'll see, I see y'all's take out there. Everybody jumping on the one more time. I already, yeah, I already put mine in, so what, what, you, what we got here? We got a lot of one more times right now. They both had their fair share. <laughs> this of is pretty close. Yeah. I think this is probably one of the closest uh, uh, battles we've seen today. 
All right, here we are waiting for the results to be projected. Is there going to be a winner on the left side of the bracket? Here we are. Nishida is going to be going with it one more time. Adriana is going to be shooting for the right side. And here we are, Imamura going right side. So it looks like Naoto Suenaga is going to get the win, and he'll be moving on to the finals here. So, unfortunately, Ken Gushi will be getting knocked out. Because unfortunately, Koldai Sobagiri, no matter what, will be getting that uh, podium position. Kangushi qualifying fourth, while Sobagiri qualifying uh, third. So yeah, very unfortunate for him. A huge run for him this round, but he does is right. not advancing on. Yeah, so I thought it was going to be a one more time, but uh, I just talked to the other judges, and they said that Gushi was um, on a smaller line, slightly uh, more than Suenaga overall, and that's pretty much why they went against or went with Suenaga. So uh, Suenaga is going to get the win, and Gushi is knocked out. But now it really depends on what's going to happen with Sobagiri versus Gray, because if Sobagiri wins, Gushi's third. If Gray wins, Subakiri's third, and oh, Gushi yeah, that's is what I meant fourth. To say. See, I said that all wrong. But yes, if Gray advances, then yes, Gushi loses his spot. So we'll see here how it's going to pan out. Yeah, see, y'all are wrong. You said one more time, just like me, y'all are wrong. No, it's funny because they that, said... That they... how you feel? That's how I feel when you're wrong, and you guys tell me I'm wrong when I'm judging. <laughs> but a lot of them were like, thank you for understanding. And he did break it down for you on what he was seeing, which is what you guys were seeing too. It was a little too close to kind of determine who's going to be the one that's going to advance to the finals. Because the finals is a big deal here. Oh, well, anytime you're moving up is a big deal. This is all a points race for the championship. Hey, this, this, this see, this is a good opportunity um, for me because I'm on the mic and the other, other judges can't talk on the mic. But I always think Sean Adriano's wrong. Yoichi Imamura is always wrong. It's all about me. <laughs> I'm just joking. I'm just kidding. No, that's why there's three of us. Uh, because, you know, it's not like a dictatorship where one guy said so. You know, there's other minds and other things. It's better to have three eyes out here. Uh, I'm sorry, three, six eyes. Three six. pairs of eyes, because that's weird if there's only three eyes. But uh, that's six pairs of eyes instead of just having one guy watching it um, and being dominant. Maybe if we have more judges, that would be even good. But, uh, like, looking at the – you guys are pretty accurate because everything you guys, you know, guess and we see the percentage out there, it's very, very close. So just want you guys to understand when we go one way or the other, there's always a reasoning behind it. And it's not about, you know, being biased or – uh, have yeah. a script or anything, you know, because I it, care. I Honestly, I care less who wins. I just want a fair and square winner out here. Oh, exactly. It's all for the respect of the sport and everything like that. But yes, like Robbie said, you know, the percentages and the voting that you did, I think there's like maybe one that was a little bit swayed the wrong direction. But like Robbie says, you know, he wants to see the best out of all of these drivers and the best results, which he puts in everything that he can. And I like the fact that he could come on the mic, explain himself, and kind of find out what the other judge's mindset yeah, was so, to explain um, to y'all. Sorry, up? there's a competition timeout going on, so um, they decided to tell us. Remember, we're last on the... The uh, list of finding out? Yeah, so I guess there's a competition timeout. Yes, if you don't know Robbie well enough, he's, he's quite the troller for sure. But yes, for those of you out in the U.S. going to the FDUS rounds, go say what's up to Robbie. He's going to be there for every single round this year. And hopefully for the future, because, you know, the biggest thing is, as you guys already know, he has a ex-pro uh, driving career before all this. You know, he has quite the experience. He's done a little bit of D1. He did FD in the U.S. He did a round out here at FD Japan. So he has he's well-rounded in different series. He uh, competed in China. Uh, was it China also? No, oh, everywhere. Asia, yeah. all of Asia pretty but, much. But I'm not that good because I'm not a champion. So so I don't know what I'm looking at. Yeah. <laughs> but you know what? We always say, you know, Mike, you know, I'm not going to drop names, I guess. But, you know, some people that are great in their sport, it's not like they're the best umpire either. And they might not even be the best coach. You know, so everybody has their own goods and bads. But I'm not trying to say I'm a good judge, but I try my best to uh, keep it fair. Um, and, you know, if you don't agree, you just don't agree. So Exactly. Right here you can see the time, a little less than four minutes. Um, 
And yes, if you do want to see Robbie drive again, go to his YouTube channel, Hey Man Robbie. He does a little bit of driving here and there. He's on no. the lower he's on the lower horsepower spectrum. No. But right here you can see happen in the back drops of everything. Andrew Gray's team getting his car squared away. They got the ECU hooked up. Probably checked log, checking the logs to make sure that the car is okay. I'm not sure if they had any kind of trouble at their uh, earlier battle. But right here, it looks like uh, maybe they're doing a tow adjustment. Yeah, you got James uh, and Jonah right there. I'm not sure what's happen. going on. Make, maybe fixing something. Maybe something felt weird in the car. But, you know, obviously going against Sobagiri, you want to make sure that your car is tip-top perfect because that's not an easy uh, driver to go against. So, you know, being able to use the competition timeout, uh, you know, you might as well use it when you need it. Yeah, especially when it's coming down to who's going to be going to the finals. Looks like he's locked in with ECU. It's good to go. James is right there in the back. Jonah's on the ground making sure everything's good on the steering. Um, those guys right there, they're the power vehicle mechanics. If you ever go out to Ebisu Circuit, drift out there, you're definitely going to run into these guys. Great guys right here. I love... Uh, BSing with them on the side. Mm. There's only a handful of people that speak English, so you know, I, I have a select few that I can talk to. But <laughs> besides that, I still love those two. Those two are some great guys um, and, yeah, they, and amazing mechanics. So, so Kenny likes them only because they speak English, but no, if you didn't see, speak that's why English, I corrected myself. Kenny don't like you. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, somebody put in the chat right there, hey man, Robbie, go check it out. You can go see him, you know, drive some weird things that he decides to buy yeah, off I'm very, and... very random, so um, sometimes I do things and sometimes I don't do things. Sometimes he has good ideas, exciting. I'll give you that. Yeah, I do, but then, you know, I, it's just so hard to, you know, it's, you're busy, so it's hard to do all these things, but there's two minutes left on the clock, and it looks like Andrew Gray is driving back to the start line, so let's see what this ex-champion, four-time FT Japan champion, Two minutes and 20 seconds, 21 seconds, 20 seconds. But I yeah. wonder if you can get a refund on. Oh, you know, yeah, like if you like, could yeah, save man, it for uh, the next one that yeah. you want. Or can I, you know, get maybe $2.24 for not, I don't know how much the time they is don't really, yeah. They don't really pay for it, so I think they should get the time back. Yeah. Well, I mean, <laughs> if you had to pay for that time, I wonder how much that Ooh, yeah. competition timeout is worth. What if you could buy competition timeouts? Like, yeah, I want to buy 10 this round. Oh, that's true, especially being on the live stream and everything, taking everybody's time right now to watch us, listen to us hey, talk then, then, instead of drifting. That, isn't that a good idea? Then that, that money that gets put into the uh, competition timeout gets becomes a gift to the people that are watching. Spectators, oh yes, yeah. Yes, for the spectators. Ooh, that's true. Oh, good. they could do like a, a uh, you know, the... Hey, I know FD's saying, shut up, Robbie. Because <laughs> I'm not going to be doing it. I'm just blabbing away and... It's not a good idea. Let's let's not do that. <laughs> well, right there, we said it before. They're on the uh, PA system and they're on the Japanese live stream. Live stream. Tom Saibo was on the right, holding the folder. Nobuto Tono Tanoguchi right there beside him, saying, uh, talking on the live stream with him, co-commentating, right there on the screen. Andy getting his car warmed up. Like Robbie said, it's probably a lot hotter on this ground right now, so it's not, it doesn't take too much to get them scrubbed. Yeah, it's so hot out that, you know, um, lately it's like during the day too, I want to take one of my dogs out for a walk, but it's way too hot, so I don't want to take her out. And now I'm thinking like, oh, maybe I should get like some kind of shoes or something like that. Then people are like, don't put shoes on your dog. But it's like, then what am I going to do? It's like, they how are they going to go swarm. outside? The little pads that stick to their paws. I just well, saw it. I mean, I'll see if I can find that. But I'm just saying, what do you guys think? This is a non-car related question. No, I'm just kidding. All right, so let's go ahead and see. Andrew Gray lined up next to Koldai Sobagiri. Sobagiri coming off of multiple um, podiums uh, this past couple weeks and months and also solidifies his podium here today because of his ranking. Andrew Gray has to win and beat Sobagiri to get on the podium. Let's see what these two cars have. Here they are coming around. Sobagiri doing his thing in the lead. Looks like Andy's falling behind early on right there. Not looking good in the chase for him. Trying to close that proximity, but not able to here into the switchback through the touch and go. 
to outer zone four. It just, uh, there was no, the gap that was created on the straight uh, pretty much stayed the same all the way through. I'm not sure if uh, there's a power difference or I'm not sure if uh, Andy didn't take off as early as he thought or maybe, you know, multiple things could be happening. And, you know, those are the things that you overlook because there's no way for us to know what's going on at the start and inside the cars and on the straightaway too. But the obvious right here is, uh, you know, there's there's a big gap even from the straightaway. And uh, Andrew Gray kind of let Sobagiri go. Sobagiri doing his thing in the lead, um, doing a good job in the lead position. And um, that's pretty much it. The first half of this battle is over. So we'll see who's going to be. This is the right side of the bracket, locking it in. Who's going to be moving on to the finals? We're about to see the second half. Andrew Gray, he's going to be in the lead this time, while Koldai Sobagiri is going to be in the chase. Now turning around at the start line, Sobagiri is set. Andrew Gray is set. Now all we have to do is see the lights drop, and it's a go. To see the second half of this battle, who is going to take the win? Is it going to be Andrew Gray, four-time champion of the Japan, or is it going to be the young driver, Kodai Sobagiri? Coming off a of victory, here he is, bringing it around right here. Sobagiri in the chase, looks like he's got better proximity here around this outer zone. Whoa. Oh, Gray looks like he did three tires right there in the lead, bringing it back around into this outer zone too. Sobagiri being very consistent with the proximity all the way through this track. And yeah, very unfortunate. It looks like Andy might have overshot outer zone one and dipped three tires. Yes, he did because even with or without, I think the proximity right here does all the talking because Sobagiri is a lot closer with Gray and Gray being in the lead position. And I think Andrew Gray is just letting it hang out, just Putting down a run, a lot of angle, a lot of uh, throttle here. That would have been actually a better qualifying run for him if he didn't make the mistake here at the outside zone one area. A lot of angle, a lot of throttle, very beautiful job, but uh, that is going to be an incomplete, unfortunately, for the lead driver. So Sobagiri waiting for the call. Here he is. Nishida is going to go left. Adriana is going to be going left, and Imamura, all three judges going left. So Koldai Sobagiri gets the win, and he will be moving on to the finals here. So both of the drivers that made it to the finals, it's Suenaga versus Sobagiri. Suenaga, a veteran, driving the Nissan 400Z, or the uh, RZ 370Z that has a 400Z I'm sorry. I don't know Face what I'm lift. talking about. Yeah, there and there you go. That's Mr. Shibata from Shibata Tire and R31 House. He is the owner of the team and uh, Sobagiri's coach. And right here we have Nobushige Kumakubo, the legendary driver, the man from Team Orange and also uh, runs Ebisu Circuit in Tohoku Safari Park and does many things. Talking to Suenaga here. Now we have Suenaga. He is going to be giving chase first. Sobagiri is going to be leading first. Uh, because of their qualifying order. You guys already know. You guys already know that. Uh, there you go. Watching this. There you go. Suenaga. Say hello to Suenaga because he is watching the live stream right now. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> he has his visor down. Ready to go let's for wave battle. At him. Yeah, let's wave, wave at, at him. him. Oh, he's not seeing us now. He doesn't see us, but he might see us on the live stream In like right 15 here. seconds. Yeah. So good luck to both of these drivers, because he is a veteran, and he's also a very, very great uh, tandem driver. He's hot, too. Yeah, he's very, very hot. But no, and, he uh, is, he's quite the character, too. I mean, he has a good time. You could tell he has a good time out there, and he makes it fun for not only his team, but himself. And you know, sometimes I always talk to Suenaga about, he's very, maybe it's it's the way Japanese people are, and they don't want to show their confidence, and he's always like, oh, I need to, I need to you know, practice more, I need to practice more. And uh, I always tell him, it's like, man, it's like you always go and practice, but you're a really, really great, great driver. And it's always good to practice. But at some, sometimes, you know, you have to have that, you know, hey, you know what? I am good, you know, and have that confidence. And uh, today might be one of those days where he has that confidence because he is going to go against Sobagiri, another young uh, driver. 
from uh, mid Japan, west to mid Japan, I think. Exactly, but before we get to that battle, I gotta say, you know, before we go to the commercials, I think Gushi locked in third. Yep, he did. So we're gonna go to the commercial. We'll be right back. The brightness called brilliant, blinding and vivid, Valentine. キュートクロー静かさと安全性オンロードオフロード世界中で活躍するケンダーその信頼を支える精運性安定性と対魔能性世界が認めた技術と信頼を街乗りである高品質と納得の価格太陽のポテンシャルをあなたにケンダー What's up guys, it's Freddy Gospo and I use RSR suspension on all my drift cars. I love RSR. Eo RSR Ichiban. Japan. Breed. Seven, kind of brand new bend again, all the way through, just throws a early transition.
in a world of extremes. This is where they're refined. The real deal. Cusco. Tentoe to Kaksin. Ogura Clutch no technology of Gyoshiku. Champion of Tortame no Clutch. Ogura Racing Clutch. ORC. See right there, Soba Gidi ready to go, but what a weekend it has been here for round four of the 2023 Cheat Shock Presents Formula Drift Japan here at Sportsland Sugo in the Miyagi Prefecture. So that's two events in a row here for Formula Drift Japan that Soba Gidi is making it into the finals. And the last time he did get knocked out by Takahashi, but this time let's see if he's gonna be able to take out Suenaga and get on top, or is Suenaga going to uh, take out and there's Takahashi right there to the left of the screen, giving him a thumbs up, ready to go. They're about to battle out this last battle, the final battle. Who's going to be the winner here at round four? Sportsland Sugo. Beautiful facility, amazing job, and it's been amazing weather all weekend long. Besides qualify for the FDJ2 drivers, they took the heat for these pro guys, but here it is, the official, the finals here at Sportsland Sugo. I mean, I'm not going to complain about you know, I wish they can just turn down the sun a little bit, just a little bit, because it's still hot up here. It is. But I know the drivers are probably blazing hot in their uh, vehicles, and uh, it's very, very humid out um, in Japan. I mean, it says 30% right oh, now. I was waving at y'all from afar, but... <laughs> See, they don't... Got ever you, they got, got me you. Yep. I think they do that on purpose. Yeah, I know. Once we do something dumb, they're gonna put the camera on us. So. They haven't got me picking my nose yet, so we're good. Okay, okay, <laughs> we'll see. Well, we probably ha we should probably avoid doing that during the live because it's, they will get us. <laughs> yeah. But there you go. That's the live side of the house. And then you see rocking back and forth. You have Sean Adriana all the way from the West Coast. This dude right here. Yep. Right there. And Taniguchi blocking your view. So you can't see Sean anymore. <laughs> but yeah, they're on the PA system and the Japanese live stream while you have myself and Robbie Nishida. He's dual hatting, judging and co-commentating with me, giving you guys the analysis of what he is seeing and the rest of the judges are seeing. But at the same time, you know, oh, he's been not a, even on the screen. <laughs> he's been a he's been a busy man all weekend. He's been for FDJ two. He does the Japanese and English side, translating whatever I'm saying because we're on the PA system and all that. But yes, right there, hands down to the Sugo workers, track workers out there. Making yeah, look it at him. He's, I mean, he's probably super hot. He's probably dazed right now because it's so hot. But yeah, make sure if you're out there and you're watching the live stream, if you're here. Um, and you don't know what they're saying in Japanese, they, they kind of remind you to make sure you take your liquids, make sure you don't get dehydrated out there, please. I mean, it's kind of late to say that because it's already been a couple of hours, yes. but. But yes, beautiful facility. Looks like both cars are just about done scrubbing their tires. This could be the last battle we see of the evening. We'll see who's going to conquer, who's going to get on top, who's going to win this round four. Sportsland Sugo, this is it. But the G-Shock presents Formula Drift Japan Pro Series here. Like I said before, we had the FDJ2 Series that happened earlier on. It was yesterday morning. We had the top 16 for them. They had uh, their top 16 qualifying, which they had 32 drivers come out for that. And then Mikey Nakamura, he took it all this time for round three of the FDJ2 series. FDJ2 is pro spec equivalent 
It's the feeder series into the pro series here in Japan. Right behind him, you had Sho Saito getting second and Otomo getting third. So there you are, you could see them rolling up, getting the overview of the pits area. The backside is the larger teams like the Team Kazama and Power Vehicles rolling in with seven cars and right beside them you have the Cusco Racing Team. But it all comes down to this right here. The Atlas Tire Drift, Team Fukushima right there. All right, it's, it's gonna be the last battle here at Sportsland Sugo for the 2023 Formula of Japan Series. Who's gonna come on top? Is it gonna be the veteran Suenaga or is it gonna be the young gun Sobagiri driving the GR86 versus Suenaga driving, it's a 370Z but a conversion, but yeah. they're both new cars. Exactly, but they, they both are VRs. Ooh, both VRs. Both VRs coming in, approaching the 3 2 1. Sobagini's been doing a phenomenal job in the lead and chase. But look at that right there. Now it's Suenaga throwing down, getting into his right hip right there, bringing it back around into this touch and go, or the outer zone three. Look at that. Nice proximity all the way through. And that's what we're talking about here for the final battle. Good job by Suenaga in the chase position. He stuck it to it. Uh, Sobagini doing a good job filling the outside zones. He's doing a great job. But Suenaga not giving him so much space, keeps his uh, vehicle right in the pocket where he's supposed to be at, chasing the lead car on the same line and switching back. Very nice job by Suenaga and getting right back into the pocket, chasing down uh, Sobagiri to the outside zone four area and the finish line. So yeah. I have nothing to say about these two drivers right, uh, driving right now. Yeah, Suenaga kept attacking, but that's all in place because the lead driver threw down a solid lead run. Now it comes down to this. Suenaga's going to be in the lead this time, and sobagiri has got to turn it up. Hopefully, Sobagiri's spotter is in his ear saying, hey, you need to turn it up this time around. You know, these are two drift cars, but driving through the track fast like that, they both look like just straight up like race car, time attack cars. That's pretty cool. But here they are, you turning, Suenaga lead, Sobagiri chase. All right, now we have Suenaga leading and Sobagiri giving chase. It all comes, it could all come down to this. This could be the last run we all see. You guys out in the live stream and you guys out in the crowd that are viewing in on the live stream. This could be the last part of the battle, oh. but just not yet. What did I say? Oh, pylon touch. Pylon touch right there. All right, so that's a pylon touch, and this just throws off the chase car, yeah. um, honestly. And and no offense, bad strategy. It yeah. takes a lot of momentum I, out of it, I, too. I don't care if it's on purpose or not on purpose. It doesn't really matter because it's in the rules and it's allowed. It's okay to do. But if it is, that's not cool, in my opinion. But if it's by accident... You know, please be careful. That's all I could say. Yeah. All right, here we are. Let's see this. Like I was saying before, this could be the last half of the battle that we see here today. This is it. Round four, 2023. G-Shock prevent presents Formula Drift Japan here at Sportsland 2. Oh. And, and if this ends off of a pylon touch, that's two strikes right there. Those of you that don't know the rules, three strikes, you're out. All right. He, he's not going to hit it the third time for sure. I know. I just know. <laughs> Are you daring him right now? No, no, no. He won't. But, like, let's say, if this was a strategy, if this was a strategy, I'm just assuming, to, to th throw off the chase car, I mean, yeah, you know, I mean, I, I, 
Not a hopefully, fan, but. So, so Bagiri, hopefully his spotter's in his ear saying, hey, focus. Let's make it up right here in the chase. Suenaga's gonna take his time through the chicane this time. There he is, making it through the chicane here, approaching the 3 2 1. Sobagini coming around, not phased by those in his pocket right there in outer zone one, bringing it back around into this outer zone two here. Sobagini in the attack through this outer zone three. Nice job filling that zone, bringing it back around to the outer zone four. That was, that was close right there. All right, uh, dipping a tire in the lead to Inaga. Does a good job filling the zones a little bit out on the outside zone too as well. A little bit late in the transition. So Bagiri a little behind overall in the chase position. Not as close as where Suenaga was and has to run a very shallow line towards the outside zone four in the finish line. Let's go ahead and check out. Let's go ahead and check out the Drone footage right here. There he is coming around into that outer zone three. So Bagiri trying to close that proximity but struggling all the way through. So now we'll have to check out what this side-by-side -side view between the two. This is the drone chase. And here you go, the side-by-side -side view between the two. Here they are once again, bringing it back around. So Bagiri really strong right there from the start with the proximity, but kind of left it a little bit. Suenaga was a little tighter on the proximity. Leads were close to one another. I made up a uh, decision. There you go. It says Koldai right there. On the sign, Shibata. Tires team right there cheering on their driver. Is he going to be able to take this all? We'll see here. And y'all already know how it goes. If you see these cars pulling away, it looks like we have a verdict on who's going to be the winner for round four. But if you see I, the scores. I think the decision is made. I'm not going to say anything yet, but just something that we talked about driver's meeting too. I'm not going to say this was the best. Um, lead runs by both these drivers because we're watching the side-by-side -side view. Both of them getting really late into outside zone three and uh, we brought that up a few times where um, maybe it's lacking the angle that we have, the drivers that had um, and they're doing the transition as they're going through outside zone three which is not filling the outside zone and both of the drivers are doing it similarly so uh, I was able to make up my mind. Like I was saying, if you see the judges' names on the board, then looks like we might have another battle happening. But we will see. Oh, they're driving off. So looks like we came with a verdict on who's going to be the winner out here. But we'll see. They're going to be pulling up to the start, or not start line, right in front of the judges panel. Waiting for the announcement on who is going to be the winner here. Sportsland Sugo, this is round four of the G-Shock Presents Formula Drift Japan series. drive it around the track so they want to enjoy the two and a half miles of sightseeing yeah sightseeing maybe <laughs> we'll just all right we're gonna the replay. we'll check out this replay right here thank you all there for sticking with us i know it's late all over the country right now it is 3 40 local time in japan 
a solid Man, 39 degrees at... Celsius. And both of the drivers are doing it. It's like they're, I mean, I want you guys to focus on this. Look at where they're doing the switchback going into the outside zone three. Focus on the cones, on where they're switching back in there. Outer zone two, here it is, outer zone three. Halfway through, already in, in, uh, in the zone. So yeah, very delayed by both drivers. Similar mistakes there. But yeah, we'll see. We're waiting for the drivers to get their cars up in front of the judges' stand so we can make this announcement for y'all. So then you guys can go to bed, enjoy your uh, the rest of your weekend, evening, night, morning, whatever the case it may be. Thank y'all for sticking out with us. Um, yeah, it's, it's been quite the weekend. We had FDJ2 early on this weekend, and then here we are, Pro Series Round 4. It was Round 3 for FDJ2. Here we are in Round 4 for FD uh, Pro Series. And then later on next month, we'll be rolling right into uh, Round 5 and Round 4 for FDJ2 and the Pro Series. But in between there, Robbie's a busy man. He'll be flying back to the States, to Seattle for FDUS. So if you're in the West Coast or Northwest Coast area, go check out the Formula Drift US side, the crazy amounts of V8s out there, the loud uh, spectators, insane amount of spectators out there. And then yeah, go check out Jared, check out the live stream. Jared making it happen, natural on the mic. Yeah, cause Jared's so much better than Kenny. Go and check that out. <laughs> much respect to Jared. Jared I love, can... I love giving Kenny a hard time, and I always do it. Uh, but, um, like, think about, you know, this. You know, Kenny came in, and you weren't a commentator or anything. No. He was just a dude <laughs> who likes cars. And, uh, yeah, uh, look how far we've came. So, yeah, congratulations. You're doing a great job. It is pretty funny how it all panned out. Don't go back to 2020, the first series I came in to do, because I butchered so many names. And I, I appreciate those that do make memes out there. I appreciate y'all for not making the memes about me. It was, no, you know, let's make somebody, <laughs> somebody make one, please. No, I, I, I do, res I respect y'all out there for not doing it. It was, it was, it's not easy, you know, going from not commentating and then I'm comp commentating to thousands of y'all out there. I love the sport. I love drifting. I'm more of a like to go have fun type drift, but uh, yeah. Come into competitions and stuff like that. I didn't do too much of that, so it's good. It's nice being out here and being hey, part of the community. Welcome back, Sean. So uh, let's put Sean on the mic real quick because we got a little bit of time for the cars coming back. How was the event uh, in your eyes, Sean? Yo, what's going on, Kenny? What's going on? So yeah, like Robbie said, how was the event overall? This is the first time you've been on the mic. You didn't get on for top 32, but here we are. We have some time. Tell yeah. us about your experience today um, at Sports Fans 2 Go. It was a good event. It was long, though. We had uh, J2 and, and uh, FPJ, so pretty long days, and it's hot. But overall, I mean, it was, it was pretty good. Um, yeah, no, no complaints, really. Yeah, definitely a different track layout than what you would see in the U.S. with the long sweepers yeah. and stuff like that. Yeah, yeah, how, sure. what do you, How do you like it? It's interesting. Um, sorry. Looks like we'll get back to Sean right there. You can see on the screen the cars finally rolled up. We're going to make these announcements. We're going to find out who the winner here is for the round four of the G-Shock Presents Formula Drift Japan Series. Yes, thank you, Sean. Um, those of you who probably wanted to hear his voice, because he's usually just chilling there. But yeah, like uh, uh, always traveling, you know, uh, putting in that time, coming to join us here at um, FD Japan. And we got the three drivers that made it on the podium here. All three vehicles are, well, one of them isn't, but one of them looks like it's as also a current car. So all three of these vehicles, you could actually go and buy off the showroom floor. Exactly. Yeah. It's pretty awesome. Came a long way because we always saw S chassis and there's nothing wrong with those cars and JZXs. We've came into a new era where these new cars are actually kicking it um, and, and um, putting down, you know, some records out here, making it all work. So here we go. We are about to announce the top three drivers.
very sentimental music here. That's a 2023 Formula Drift Japan round four here at Sportsland Sugo. Let's go ahead and announce the top three drivers. Now, Kenny, go ahead and let us know. Tell us who the third place driver is. All right, here we are, ready to announce the winner. But first, we got to announce this third place podium finisher right here, coming all the way out from the West Coast with a Team Kazama with Power Vehicles Lexus IS500 F Sport Performance Drift, number 21. Ken Gushi! <laughs> Great job. I'm sorry. Great job by Ken Gushi. Making it onto the podium. Pretty sure he wanted to get on the top spot, but barely missing it. Now announcing the winner of the 2023 Formula Drift Japan Round 4 Sportsland Sugo. The winner here after the hard fought battles goes to the gentleman driving the Atlas Tire Drift Team Fukushima Z34 Fair Lady Z car number 311 Naoto Suenaga gets the win congratulations Suenaga Naoto Senshu Yusho Omedeto Gozaimasu congratulations to Naoto Suenaga and in second place. In second place here, he got third at Fuji, moving up in the brackets right here, getting second today in the Shibata Racing Yokohama GR86, number 31, Kodai Sobagiri. Congratulations to these drivers. Sobagiri, another young driver, he's second. I know he was second in Fuji. But uh, I'm pretty sure that he wanted no. to get on the top spot. He was third. Oh, I'm sorry. He was so in he's third. moving yeah. up. So, so yeah. He's moving up. Hey, next round, he's going to be on the I, top. I think he might be. Hey, you know, being on the podium round after round after round, this is three I, events he's been to. That's a major drifting event in Japan uh, and making it onto the podium all three times. Exactly. And here you go. I guess uh, it's uh, Suenaga's birthday today. So happy birthday to Suenaga and congratulations to making it all the way up. That it's been a while, so I don't remember what to say or what to talk about because it's been a while since I've been on an interview like this. I just have to say I'm really, really happy. Team Fukushima, team Team Orange, team Fukushima, everybody that has to do with the team, everybody cheering us on. We have so many people. Early round, I couldn't do as well because the car was in the prepared enough. And from Fuji, I couldn't do as well because the car was in the prepared enough. And you know, just staring at the car every night. The car's been getting better. I think I was, you know, mentally getting the car in a better position. And on my 47th birthday, I think I got the best present in my life. I think I got the best present in my life. And I'll have to say thank you to everyone out here. Congratulations to Suenaga. And coming, the runner-up coming in second place is Kodai Sobakiri. Let's see what he has to say about this podium finish in Fuji. The first time you were on the podium, you were third, and now you are the runner-up second place. How do you feel? First, everyone すごいリフレッシュとか、もう全然トラブルがないようにチームの皆様が、そしてファンの皆様のおかげで、トラブルなく走れるように準備していただきました。その中で、優勝はできなかったんですけど、一つ一つ順位を上げていけてるのかなった
Thank you very much, everybody, for cheering me on. Congratulations to Sobagiri. Great job, great hustle, and uh, great job by all the team team guys. Talking about the Team Orange guys and the um, uh, Shibata Racing guys. And uh, very, very close, but taking the third place spot, Kenshiro Gushi. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Everybody, fans, anybody have to do with the event? Team, really, really thankful. Thank you very much. We didn't really have any issues with the vehicle. I was able to drive the car through the event, and I was able to bring the car to here. And I had really, really enjoyed it. Of course, I do want to win the event. But uh, being able to bring it to this, being able to drive the drive the car to here and making it to here, um, I'm good enough. It's good enough for me, and I'm happy. And of course, you know, going for the winning is what I'm going for too, so I'm trying my best and the hardest to get there. Congratulations for Ken Gushi being third place here at Sportsland Sugo. And uh, they're going to go ahead and start taking pictures and we will do the official uh, award ceremony after this, but we're going to be cutting this uh, live stream right here shortly. Yeah, congratulations to all the drivers right there. You can see three beautiful cars sitting right in front of us. Three very, very beautiful cars. And hope you guys enjoyed the um, live stream. I mean, I didn't get to watch the live stream, but I got to watch it live, so uh, I have nothing else to say. I think there was a start off a little rough. There were a couple of battles that it was like, eh, you know, but there was a, also a couple of battles that was like, whoa. You know, yes. I was out of my seat. Um, I got really excited, and you know, I don't have so many words to share with you guys when I get excited. It's usually like, whoa, or something like that. Um, but I have nothing else to say because, uh, yeah, the drivers drove their hearts out, and I think the teams prepped the cars as much as possible. For those of you who didn't make it all the way up to the finals and top 16, and the guys that didn't make it into the top 32 too, you know, don't give up, because we still got two more rounds for you to come out here and get on the podium and shine because that's what you're working hard for. And also your team and the fans are looking forward to seeing that. And we are also always looking forward to these drivers and teams working very, very hard. So congratulations to the podium drivers. And also congratulations to all the drivers and teams that are out here today going for the championship and on top of the podium. Yes, much respect for you fans out there and the Formula Drift US. Joyce out there holding it down in the thank chat you. for us. Yes, thank thank you. you. Putting up uh, the scores and those little votes that you guys got to cast throughout the thing. But man, what a beautiful weekend. But you know, this is gonna be it. It's wrapping up round four here at the G-Shock Presents Formula Drift Japan Series. Man, what a 2023. Oh yeah, man. And uh, like I always talk about it, you know, Kenny is gonna be leaving us after the next two rounds. So don't start crying there, buddy. Cause <laughs> Kenny's getting sad because he's gonna be gone after this event. But uh, we have two more events to enjoy. So please tune in and uh, also, Check out what's going on with Formula Drift USA, Formula Drift Japan. We got the J2 coming around. Uh, we're going to be in Okuibuki doing the FDJ and FDJ2 and J3. And J3, yeah. J2 and J3. It's going to be a back-to-back -back weekend. Very, very uh, busy schedule month. this year, yeah. Exactly. But before then, you have Seattle, FDUS Seattle happening. So you can go check out, say what's up to Sean Adriana or Robbie Nishida. But there they are. To the left, Kodai Sobakiri coming in second. The winner. Now to Suenaga, and to the right, that's Kenshiro Gushi being third place. Congratulations once again to these drivers. And let's talk about the next round. Looks at there's a birthday cake waiting for him. So the birthday cake for Suenaga, 47 years old. They got us on the small screen here, getting their last pictures in, wrapping things up, and then we're gonna show you the actual schedule on the, oh, ho, ho, ho. What a way to get them right there. <laughs> now they should take the photos. <laughs> there you go, he said, here, try your cake. He just says it's really good. <laughs> Now 
Yeah, and you know, uh, I just heard them talking about, yeah, nowadays we have to actually say, hey, we didn't, they're not gonna waste the cake. They're gonna actually cut it up and eat it after they smash it in his face. Because, <laughs> you know, um, Robbie's getting a piece of that. No, no, no. <laughs> I don't want, you know, other facial oil on cake <laughs> from another man. Oh, whoa. Just sorry for what you had to see right here. すいません、えー、本当にこんなにみチームの方からですね今日はあの練習走行終わって、えー、突然あのケーキとか用意していただいてて誕生日パーティーをしていただき、えー、それでまた一層気合いも入って、えー、まあ走りも集中できたかなと思います、えー、本当にもうあのチームの皆さんにはもう感謝しかありません本当ありがとうございます A lot. Thank you very much. I wanted to know how, what flavor the cake was. Or I wanted to know how it tasted. I don't know. He's, I think he snorted the majority of the cake. Yeah. But yeah, I'm just checking out the last bit of the chat. We're just trying to get this, I believe, scheduled and then we can wrap it up. I know we kind of wrapped it up already, but like Robbie said, we're cued off of how it's going out here on the Japanese live stream and the actual commentators that are commentating for the spectators out here. But that is a wrap right there. They're taking last minute pictures. And like he says, if you're out in this area, go over by the vendor's booth. We're going to go ahead and have the presentation of the trophy, the G Shock watch, the big old. Money card、uh, check right there for the drivers. Man, but you know, all three cars still look like there's nothing, like, you know, it's leaving the way it came.、Um, but I think the next round at the next round at、uh, Okuibuki, there's walls. It's a little bit more tight.、Yes. There's a lot of things going on. Looking at the schedule right here, round five, August 19 to 20, Grand Snow Okuibuki. We will have the fifth round of. Formula Drift Japan, and the weekend after that, August 26 to 27, we have Okubuki Motor Park, Jim Kana area. We will be、um, doing the FDJ2 and J3 round there too, so we will have live stream、uh, there. Check out the social media of Formula Drift Japan, they'll keep you noted, and we'll see you there. And、uh, if you don't want to hear us, you can hear the,、uh, the Japanese live stream too. But, exactly,、uh, yeah. whenever it comes to the pro side. But FDJ2 is a one live stream session, so yeah, tune in. In. Say what's up to us in the chat. But till then, this is pretty much going to wrap it up. Yeah, so there's team、uh, Suenaga's team here with the Team Orange Lean Long Tire, Team Fukushima, all that put together. The guys hard at work, made it all the way to the top here, and congratulations to all of these、um, team members. And thank you very much for having us, and、uh, thanks for sticking around. You guys are the true heroes behind the screen here, watching us for the live stream. We'll see you guys、uh, next time on the next live stream. Thank you very much, and good night, and, and good a, morning, and, and good evening. And that's a wrap from Sportsland Sugo.
زبان بذارم بروتوست آسایی جی شک کاشیو The brightness called brilliant, blinding and vivid, Valentine. キュートクロー静かさと安全性オンロードオフロード世界中で活躍するケンダその信頼を支える静音性安定性と対魔法性世界が認めた技術と信頼を街乗りでは高品質と納得の価格太陽の保全車をあなたにケンダ What's up guys, it's Freddy Gospo and I use RSR suspension on all my drift cars. I love RSR. EO RSR Ichiban.
in a world of extremes. This is where they're refined. The real deal. Cusco. Tento to Kaksin. Ogura Kratch no technology of Gyoshiku. Champion of Tortame no Kratch. Ogura Lessing Kratch. ORC.